Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I need to take this off. <laughs> Plus, hi everybody. Can you hear me? Check, check, please. Um, I'm waiting for the 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 the, the con 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 confirmation from the chat so I can really introduce our guests into the 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 panel today. Hi, everybody. So you can hear me. Okay. Um. Welcome to my panel today. I'm Luna uh, from Vietnam. I'm living in Vietnam. And the panel today is a panel of indigenous and POC comrades from all over the world. And we're going to talk about racism, the empire, and how we are all affected by it. And I let's introduce all the awesome guests to our show today. First, let's welcome Lasu. Hi. Oops. Hi, Lasu. Are you okay? <laughs> okay, I will uh, introduce the next guest now on the show. And I'm waiting for Lasu to get ready. Lasu, if you're ready, just uh, leave me uh, a chat, okay? Okay, now let's welcome. Yeah, we all can't hear Lasu at all. So let's welcome Silver Spook to the stream. Hi. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes. Hey. Um, uh, hey, aloha, everybody. I'm uh, Silver Spook. I'm a, uh, you probably know who I am, but if not, I am a Native Hawaiian. I'm an activist and a defender of our sacred mountain, Mauna Kea, here on the uh, Big Island of Hawaii under ongoing U.S. empire, speaking of empire, U.S. empire, illegal occupation and fraudulent annexation. So, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be here as always with our comrade and friend and relative, Una. Uh, uh, I did, yeah, we did try to, I'm sorry that it was a little bit, uh, a little quick uh, within the last less than a week to put this together, but uh, we thought it was very important. Yeah, We did it, important. we did it, yeah. We did do it. We did do it. So solidarity um, yeah. with, with uh, anyway, but it's very important because of um, ongoing discussions and uh, um, problems of anti-white racism being centered yeah, uh, exactly. on top of a lot of other things that are all happening around the world right now. Yeah. Here, here in Hawaii, we're having a lot of serious uh, disastrous problems due to racism and empire uh, here at uh, the Red Hill catastrophe. Um, uh, my, my family is directly impacted by that. The spilling of thousands of gallons of fossil fuel into our water, the historically yeah, and yeah. right now, it's, it's, it's so yeah. fucked up. And yeah, yeah. so anyways, we, I'm sure we'll talk about all these things. So I'll, I want to let all the guests sure. get introduced, though. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's welcome Professor Flower, my good comrade. Hi. Oops. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? How? Yes, yes, yes. How are you? How are okay. you? Good. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I am doing good. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, I am Professor Flowers. I have a YouTube channel um, called Professor Flowers. Um, I talk about, uh, you know, I, I, I focus on media that I think generally humanize, tries to humanize marginalized people. Um, it's what I focus on. And yeah, I'm really happy to be here today to be talking about uh, racism and all the, uh, also the illegal occupation uh, that the U.S. is still uh, pushing on indigenous people. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And now let's welcome our comrades to the lawsuit. <laughs> Hi, can everyone hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, my just Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so great to see you here. Uh, can you introduce yourself to our comrades in the chat? Shit, if you don't know who the hell I am, what the hell are you doing with your life? Like, exactly curious. right <laughs> <laughs> i am often imitated but never originated because i am the only original um <laughs> no just kidding <laughs> hi everybody i'm lost Sue. um i'm that uh crazy wild far extreme left uh twitch streamer that y'all hear about that talks about all these wild and crazy things that you know buck up against patriarchy, um, white colonialism, and um, capitalism, you know. 
just you know extreme leftist yeah, <laughs> yeah. being indigenous is being extreme left you know exactly yeah. it's just like being who we are is already extreme leftist <laughs> mm. yeah yeah so okay um well let's start the thing is that like i first i want i i i want i want to talk about racism because the thing is that like i can see from the people that i encounter on both twitter and on my channel lots of people especially white people they really don't understand what racism actually means and what whiteness actually means and lots of them keep like you know keep mistaking with like people being rude to each other that is why it leads <laughs> to all kind of anti-white racism quote unquote so the thing is that like yeah i really want to address that first to 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 set a record straight about what we meant when we say racism and professor flower you made a really awesome video about this topic so i i really really want you to to, to, to educate us on what racism mean here. Sure. And it's actually funny because I just posted a tweet about it today um, that I thought was a, a good summary. So someone was asking me to uh, the other day, like, how would you define racism? And I think sometimes defining racism can be tricky because it looks different depending on the country you're in, because it's very unique to that particular place's history or that region's history as well. Um, but I gave the example for, uh, you know, the U.S. and how in the U.S. there wasn't always the category of white people and non-white people. And then basically to justify the colonialism and also slavery, uh, the category of white was created to basically make a caste system and say, hey, white people are people. Uh, and then the other people who are not white are still some people in some some kind of way. But um but less so, and very much less so. And there's, there's been certain progress as time has gone on, but basically that caste system has never really ended. There's been improvements, there's been progress, but it's never really ended. And I think having that context is really important to understand that uh, that's the systemic nature of it. When people say that racism is systemic, they're saying that this is built into the foundation of our society. And so racism mm -hmm. is not an accident, it's a feature and it was built that way. And then of course, if you look at history of other countries, you'll see similar stories or like, or you'll see the mass influence of that. Um, but again, you know, if you don't live in the US, um, I encourage people to try to understand that history because your country probably has a history with something like that too. Um, so yeah, I think that's the first thing I wanna mention is that racism is systemic and then, um, and I guess like in summary, we're still dealing with that oppression, even though there has been improvements, but uh, we're still trying to have equality, for example. And indigenous people are still fighting for sovereignty that they should have always had. Mm. But yeah, again, the systemic nature of it, because also I, I do want to add on to, I just thought of, because you know, you're saying that, that people are saying, oh, it's just being mean or it's just being rude. And that's something that I've also touched on. Um, I do want to say something about this really fast too. I do think that people can truly like, I'm not, I think people have this misconception that when you're, when you say that you can't be racist to white people, that people are saying, oh, so you can just be mean to us. And I don't think that what, that's what anyone's trying to say. Like people aren't saying like, Hey, just be mean to people. I think there's, I think with the, the thing that people are really missing is a lot of times when people do make jokes about white people, and this is probably gonna get me in trouble, but I'm just speaking from my own experience yeah. and what I've noticed. A lot of jokes that are racially about white people are pointing out racism. They're pointing out how, like there's been like, a lot of those like, I'm thinking of off the top of my head are like pointing out how like white people, like I, made a, I, I, I gave an example in this video that I made a little bit ago or a couple months ago. And I, there was this, there was a, a choir of mostly white children and they were singing this like hip hop song called Watch Me Whip. And um, they sang it in a very, uh, they sing it in a classical style. And a lot of people were saying like, this is really cringy, things like that. And, um, you know, some people might respond like, why is it cringy? And people are like, well, they thought that they could kind of take out the, the African-American culture out of the song and that, that they truly believe it would make it better, especially in the context of classical music because classical music is very European. It is very white and I'm not saying that that's bad. I love lots of classical music, but people have this belief of superiority where if they can take 
you know, the blackness out of things or, or in t- take things that are non-white out of things that's going to be better. And if you can make things more white, uh, you know, things, they believe that things will, can be better. And this is not consciously happening. Like, people aren't explicitly saying this, but we see this pattern happen over and over and over again. And so, um, you know, a lot of people were making fun of that. And I use that as an example to be like, people are making fun of that not because they hate white people, because they're pointing out that there's like this lack of self-awareness that white people often have, where they tend to condescend towards people of color, and they're not even aware of it. And they they really thought they could make they could take the black culture out of this and make it better and actually made it worse. Um, but I think a lot of jokes around like white people being colonized or things like that, it comes down to actually pointing out how a system of oppression is being perpetuated and how white people are perhaps ignorant to that, how white people perpetuate that. So when people do make jokes about white people, I think before becoming reactive, ask yourself, is this a joke that's like actually degrading? Because I do believe that is yeah. possible. Um, or is it a joke that's actually pointing out a system of oppression? And I think a lot of times when I think about it, I'm like, this is pointing out a system of oppression. So maybe don't tone police all that to say. <laughs> it's a long winded way of just saying, stop tone policing us. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, Lasu, what do you think about this? Hmm. Will that whole entire pre uh, amble from Professor Flowers just destroy my whole entire joke? for tonight um but (laughs) um damn it i was looking forward to calling them colonizers the one hey we can do it again we can there's there's not too much of that (laughs) i i mean when you think about it okay look gabe called us all kinds of things from the n-word to all different kinds of names they can come up with squaw whatnot right and yet they're crying over something that's basically a food that you use for soups and stuff a saltine um i'm not permitted to say the word so i'm going to behave um God damn it. <laughs> but they're sitting there crying over this shit. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Try listening to people calling your mother as a little kid when you're a little kid a squaw and that she's only good for, you know, one thing and not even that. Like, all kinds of different shit. And it's like, oh, because you're a saltine, now you're going to cry? Like, seriously, you want to talk about oppression and racism and you want to go over reverse racism? Seriously? I would really hate to see you go through what us, what us people of color go through if being referred to as a saltine is like a crime in your eyes and such a hurtful statement. I would hate to see you live through the shit that we people of color have lived through for hundreds of years. I hate to see it. Seriously, get over yourselves. And on top of that, I also want to bring forth, we have some awesome news that has been coming out a lot lately within the science community. (laughs) You know I was going to do it, Silver. You know I was going to do it, Cola. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The science community has just brought up to the factor that they have found in the Amazon's sites and cities and hedges that go back to at least 130,000 years. That predates the Bering Strait theory. And I'm, I'm just laughing. And when I'm seeing all of these people going, going mask off and going, what do you mean? What do you mean? We don't mean the Bering Strait real theory is real. No, it's not. Sorry. They lied to you all. They didn't even know what the fuck they were talking about in the beginning, except for the part of my swearing, um, except for literally making sure that nothing went, uh, the history on, on Turtle Island and other continents didn't go past 13 to 1500s. Anything past that, They were chasing their own people out of their communities because they did not want to admit that indigenous people were here prior to the land bridge because it helped them with their doctrine of discovery and terra nullis bullshit. 
those are two basic fundamental racist I don't know if we could say tropes stigmas laws or ideologies I guess would probably be the better statement for it um that we have today is this whole terra nullis that uh, before white European male land-owning men showed up on any foot on any soil there was nothing there so I get the fuck out of here you know what I mean sorry good now yeah the thing is that like I will say real quick like I it's kind of painful to watch you know like we we've been bearing racism for centuries right now and now suddenly because of the ding dong some ding dong some twitch streamers suddenly white people taking hijacking of the pain that we had to bear for centuries now turning to them like i'm sorry but not everything is about you white people and you are hijacking all the pain that we have to bear for a long time like that oh see what's book what is your take on this racism thing um yeah i don't yeah it's hard to even know where to start i try not to pay too much attention i know you probably have to because you i know luna is luna is actually doing god's work i know this ceos of white <laughs> capitalist owned banks in like goldman sachs say they're doing god's work they literally say these kind of things uh tucker carlson believes he's doing god's work i know that um uh but luna is actually one constantly fighting these battles so i let the, you know so 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 kudos to you number one number two um i I haven't I I, I kind of get the gist of it. It's it's it is kind of nonsensical, but it, it makes it does make a in a twisted way a certain sense, this kind of centering. I mean it, it's really not it's really not that new actually. And I remember I don't know if Luna, you were there on the recent panel where I read out John Swinton, the labor white labor organizer for the in the eighteen hundreds, what he actually said about Asians. Um I don't know if you heard that. I don't want to repeat it because it's disgusting, but mm. it is a pattern that when when there is capacity for people, when there is like suffering of the of the masses, what we call the working classes, if you're in the left end of the spectrum, uh, against you know the capital owners, uh, et cetera. Um, historically, what has happened in the West, in the United States, multiple times, is um, it's always really been there, but it, it really comes to the forefront, which is instead of if you don't know who John, John Swinton was a friend of Karl Marx, by the way. And I bring that up only not because to throw shade at Karl Marx, but because that is what the left has to has had to offer in the West, right? And not because that you shouldn't try to deal with these systems of economic and racial, et cetera, inequality, but because that is your heritage. If you are a white person in the United States, if you're a white person on the planet Earth, if you are a European, and that's gonna be very hard to deal with, but this is this is this is the truth. Um but basically what he said was rather than uh, we are suffering economic inequality, capital is gaining power in 1800s during the Gilded Age. Um, rather than unite with our fellow Chinese workers, because there are a lot of Chinese, they came to build the railroads. Mm. They, were, they built the West Coast, Canada and the United States. Britain is not exempt from this. Mm -hmm. Britain, Britain gave birth to America. That's your child, actually. It's the Anglo-Saxon Empire. You're all still in AUKUS. So Britain... <laughs> Canada, the United States, Australia were also part of this, the white Australia policy. What they said was the white Australia policy basically banned anyone. Ch Chinamen consisted of Vietnamese, Japanese, Korean, anybody with, I'm not going to say the word, S word eyes, speaking of racism, anybody with weird yellow mm. skin, brown monkeys, basically. That's what they called, you know, coolies is another word they use. I, I know, Luna, you know this word. They use that in Hawaii we too. We use that in Vietnam too. We they use that in the colonial, the colonial, colonial, colonializing time in Vietnam. Oh my God, sorry, I cannot say that word. But yes, it became yeah, yeah. a Vietnamese word too to call like the poorest, miserable class of people, like near like slave. Yeah, exactly. It's you know essentially it's as close as you could get to slavery in a, in the U.S. It was basically overt chattel slavery, particularly of black people. Um, and anyway, so 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 rather than organize with those working and settlers, the book Sakai's book does touch on this, at least it, it's really settlers is very light. We, I have a lot of Marx. I had a, we had a Marxist professor that we housed for free because we don't 
ask for people for rent or anything. There are no bosses and no landlord, no landlords and no bosses at the indigenous Aloha civilization, Silver Spukui. We house someone for free. But they, they fought me on that. They said, I, I disagree with settlers and I don't believe that settler colonialism is a problem. Mar eight year Marxist degree, friend of Richard Wolf. Platform Richard brought Richard Wolf to a university. You know who Richard Wolf is, right? If you're a white Mark leftist in the United States, you know who he is. He's not a bad guy. But but he also said settler colonialism is not a problem. The United States can have a white socialist revolution without dealing with this problem. And I disagreed. And uh, he doesn't live here anymore. But I mean, it's okay. We, we house anybody. We don't care. I mean, we prefer people that are not failing to address their own secondary, you know, uh, 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 contradictions. We prefer people that are, you know, but we'll house anybody. But anyway, we had a big disagreement about that. I remember it blew up. Uh, I really didn't like thought slime, but anyways, uh, <laughs> settlers and, and but but what it was is the same thing that happened in 1870s because this labor organizer, what he said was, rather than organize with the Asian working classes who are paid four to eight times less than us, who can be who are killed at a moment's notice, who suffer and eat rats, and they joke about the guy joked about he, again leftist, he platformed Karl Marx in a beautiful article where he asked Karl, Karl, Karl was in Europe of course fighting for the working class, et cetera. And he said, Carl, what, 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 what is in this very New York times, New Yorker, I'm a, I'm a deep thought provoking, provoking descendant of the Russo's Karl Marx. What is, and Carl said struggle. And then anyway, this, this labor organizer said the Chinese must not be organized with the Chinese are despotic. The Chinese are apolitical, the Mongolian blood, the yellow blood, the Asian blood is debased blood. The greatest dividing line is that of race. We cannot, and we shall not, the beginning and the end of history is race. The beginning and the end of history is race. These, the, the, the Anglo-Saxon, the Teutonic, and the Celtic uh, uh, strains are the most powerful. And the, and the United States represents the, the fusion and the hybridization of the greatest of the European strains of man. And we cannot allow this blood. Our working class, again, leftist, our working class blood, our great working class and capital classes, must unite against the greatest dividing line. This is in the 1870s. There was, he was a union organizer. He was anti-slavery. He was anti-slavery. Uh, he didn't think he think that was acceptable. He didn't think that black people were at the same level, but he wasn't happy with slavery. Now there was Abraham Lincoln, but Abraham Lincoln wanted to sell slaves back to Africa. So mm -hmm. anyways, um, and so my point here is that, and he said in, in his, he wrote, he called, it was called the Chinese question. It was published in, the, in multiple of the most well-read uh, journals in that time. And everyone bought it up and that was the basis for the chinese exclusion act which was later applied to hispanics and it was the what, what has been done to asians is quietly brushed under the rug but is really uh along with what has been done to black people uh much of all of that is and indigenous people has all been brushed <clears throat> under the rug but this but but the point was they were so productive the asians were so productive and they were being paid so little not because they deserved it but because of racism and the solution was to ban them from entering the united states not to organize with the asians ban them from entering and uh, call for their, basically, he did, he said everything short of their extermination. He said, if any violence were to take place, he just called them, their, if, if their blood were be, to be transfused with the white blood, it would degrade our great race. And so, he's, and at the end he says, I, I disavow any violence that may occur due to what I have said. I have no ill will towards the Asians. Now, what happened after that? The greatest mass lynchings in the history of the United States, Colorado, Seattle, uh, in Hawaii, my ancestors were exterminated in Honolulu, Chinatown. You don't reel about that when you come to Hawaii, do you? No, you don't. I'm Asian and Pacific Islander, by the way. I'm actually Hawaii, Hawaiian and Asian. Uh, and also, I also have a, a white ancestry in the back. I got colonizers up inside there, but um, I'm from the Chinatown. And that's something that you don't learn. They actually incinerated 10,000 plus people's businesses and houses. And then white men armed with white police officers at gunpoint forced Asian and Pacific Islanders back into the blaze. So they burned us alive. They don't, they don't, they don't have any record of this because the United there's no history and there's no education in the West. But um, my point is that uh, if you are, a, what you're calling yourself a leftist, if you want to deal with the racial, if you want to deal with even the economic inequality, if you want to deal with absolutely anything, um, this, this, this pussyfooting around, this dancing around, these questions, these, these, this racism that is, uh, by the way, Donald Trump beats Joe Biden hands down for the next election. Uh, they, they are currently organizing uh, Tucker Carlson is the number one most watched and, and everyone around him is joining along with along with uh, sellouts like the uh mr mr uh cheering for the miners in south africa um trevor trevor mr trevor noah is over there cheering on and there are sellouts to white supremacy like him who are saying 
we need a white country. Anti-white racism is the number one problem. And along with women, right? I just saw recently a leftist, a leftist has said, anti, anti-imperialists also, they said, women, basically, no, you say women, said teachers, nurses, Netflix software engineers, basically all women and non-straight cis white guy coded jobs are not working class. That is, uh, that is uh, the re- great replacement theory is the number one uniting factor behind the, behind the January 6th action that is coming again. And um, this is not a joke. This is not, this is, this is not, this is what the United States, Germany, and other white countries have done again and again and again, sometimes with full, full on million person genocide, sometimes with just mass lynchings, but definitely with continued white supremacy collaborating with capitalism, with oligarchy, and with empire. Sometimes they split a little bit. That's the Democratic Party. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, clothing themselves in LGBTQ plus and Black Lives Matter flags on the Tomahawk missiles and on their president. But that, but that is all going to fade away when it becomes uh, when it becomes maximally beneficial to the most powerful oligarchs on the earth to weaponize their white supremacy and all of these other. Anyway, so um, that's not really answer anything, but I just want to throw some context into that. And also, that's also history of Hawaii. By the way, Hawaii actually had racial equality for Asians and, and Africans where we became free. When America was in the Civil War, Canada was segregating and massacring. It's still massacring indigenous people and segregating black people in Hawaii actually had racial equality. And that's what an actual hui is. That's why I call it Silver Spook Hui. It's not just a worker cooperative because it's more than that. It's a worker cooperative and a political action like the Sing Chang Hui and the Tang Meng Hui, which which uh, anyway, that's all. I'll stop there. Yeah, it's 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 great to 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 hear from like all the information from you. It's the thing is that like I think lots of people like especially I'm talking about white people here. And by the way, EJ, who is a white American, he's re uh, releasing a video like right now about whiteness and how to address racism like that. And I hope that you all can stay tuned and watch that video if you're white and if you're still confusing about you know like your whiteness white supremacy and how racism works um it's it's a thing that like we all need like we we as people of color we hope that you will all will have you know like open mind when you learn about those stuff talk about stuff and by the way that's danny haifong is waiting here in the studio welcome welcome how are you danny hey hey i am good thanks for having me all on thanks for having me on y'all i really appreciate it thank you for so much for talking about this i i needed this it's it's been (laughs) it's it's wild out here especially in this media space it's like anyway i was just doing a stream myself because yeah tucker carlson popping off at the mouth with the this racist jesse kelly figure too right oh yeah oh my god you know just talking about a top sitting atop chinese skulls like this is how this is what this is how these white supremacists think of 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 us you know that like that's what they think of us and, and so yeah we have to we have to we have to talk about this and and too yeah, few are willing to. to too few are exactly. willing to yeah yeah so uh can you please introduce yourself real quick to the chat sure hello everyone so i'm danny haifong i am an independent journalist, uh, activist, um, you know, I write primarily for Black Agenda Report. I also contribute to CGTN. I have my own Substack now at chroniclesofhaifong.substack.com. And I manage my own blog at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. And I, I do some YouTubing, do some, uh, I have a show called The Internationalist Transmission in the Left Lens on YouTube. Um, so yeah, that's basically me. I also co-edit this Friends of Socialist China, which Luna spoke at a recent event on the Summit for Socialist Democracy to counter Joe Biden's imperialist Summit for <laughs> Democracy. Uh, and you did, and she did it. You did an incredible job talking about Vietnam because we wanted to highlight socialism and how socialism is a democracy and how, you know, uh, we should be paying attention to actually existing socialist countries. So that's something I focus a lot on. And White supremacy, you know, that's that's how I got into this struggle, uh, you know, from early on, just understanding white supremacy as being just 
part of daily life in the United States. And then that evolving into understanding the economic roots of it in capitalism and imperialism and learning, you know, about the liberation movement in Vietnam, learning about the victory there. And uh, then moving on from that and understanding how we can't really understand white supremacy without understanding Marxism, capitalism, without understanding uh, the system of white supremacy as being rooted as a, in a ruling class project of domination and exploitation of us <laughs> to, yeah. to super exploit us. So we uh, can provide uh, the, the, the profits and, and the hegemony for, for these decaying empires uh, of the West. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, Danny, we we we've been talking about, you know, racism, and mm. you know the brief history of racism and how we are having to deal with this, and also the anti-white racism discourse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's your Reverse take about racism? This? <laughs> <laughs> what's my take? All right, so. So here's the thing across the political I'll, I'll just i'll try to be very brief and and i i think i'll be on for like 45 minutes hopefully i can be on here i, I would love to stay longer but i don't know if i'm able to um yeah i want to say really quick that there is a really growing trend that's very problematic across the political spectrum in the united states and it's called colorblindness and that's where this reverse racism narrative comes out of it's this idea that because the united states is now post-racial after the civil rights movement, the election of Barack Obama, that somehow racism is not really a problem anymore. It's just an idea in somebody's head. It's just <clears throat> ideas. And so to talk about racism now is actually just attacking white people. It's just attacking mm -hmm. so-called white workers now. And this became a huge problem under Donald Trump where everyone was trying to figure out, oh my gosh, these white working class people, they're so disgruntled that they're just going to vote for Donald Trump, right? Nobody wanted to talk about the actual character of racism because colorblindness had ruled the day for uh, more than eight years in the United States and arguably for longer than that. So really, you know, this whole idea of reverse racism, the idea that we live in a post-racial society is really yeah. a reflection of an attempt by the ruling class to re- uh, to reorient itself, to, to create a new kind of propaganda where the actual structural roots of racism, the fact that we have the U.S. military literally destroying non-white countries all over the world based on white supremacist ideology, and you have a situation in the United States where, you know, I'm sure you all were talking a bit about this, whether it's Hawaii, whether it's uh, uh, indigenous people across what's called the United States at this point, uh, this includes uh, those folks who, uh, the Mexicans who had their land colonized uh, in the 19th century. The fact that there are persistent and worsening, growing problems when it comes to race. And, and, and it's a class contradiction, right? And so I always say that if you are not willing to speak up about racism, then you are not fighting a class struggle because in the actual reality of any kind of working class struggle in the United States, you are always going to find instances of the, like the boss, bosses, employers, corporations, whatever you want to call them. They love racism. They stoke it all the time. They actually literally create workplaces that are institutionally racist in the sense that you will have white workers with a certain status in, in workplaces in, in black workers and in, in, in non-white workers, you know, being super exploited in other areas of the economy, of the workplace. Uh, literally, black men makes 56 cents of every dollar that a white male worker makes. Like, that's how relevant racism is. You know, you literally have black people being imprisoned three times their amount in the population compared to white people where it's not even close to that. It's not even, you know, it's, it's not even proportionate, right? Like, it's it, that is the reality of white supremacy in the real world. And those who want to play this oh, well, you're just, make, you're just dividing people by talking about this. You're dividing the working class. They're not interested in the working class. They're interested in some kind of electoral scheme, some kind of, uh, some kind of opportunity where they can take advantage of a, a troubling political trend, which is a huge rightward shift in the, the United States and all of its Western client states, and how that rightward shift is turning into 
complicity and complacency with a growing number of people who are turning to right wing politics to explain this decaying political situation and economic situation in the United States. But that really is just defeatism. And so any kind of room or uh, any kind of uh, acceptance or defensiveness around talking about racism as a class struggle is is simply uh, defeatism. And, and I have been very clear from the very beginning that there is a liberal strand of politics that seeks to exploit race in order to forward the political ends, let's say, of the Democratic Party, uh, so-called identity politics. We can't, of course, that's, that's not even questionable, right? That's just the reality. But to go so far then to negate the very existence of racism is to just, it's just a right deviation, right? In the old Marxist term, it's like a right deviation. You're literally just moving to the right in order to explain a situation that actually requires a left, a revolutionary uh, solution, intervention. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is that like um, the liberal identity politics, so like those people, they are making use of our identity to serve their agenda and it's very disgusting. And I, about a few months ago, I had a video about the pinkwash imperialism talking about how <laughs> The organization from the USA, such as like the USAID, the USAID right. is using using the LGBTQ plus community in Vietnam to bring right. in the capitalist hegemony. And the thing is that like the thing that upset me the most is actually I got attacked by leftists mm. from the from the USA because I dare to speak up like, hey, Vietnam has a candidate that is exactly like Pete Buttigieg. Like he's gay, he's hot, and he just like work for the freaking imperialism. And yeah. I got attacked because I dare to point that out. So like it's it's something that got ingrained real real deep inside the mindset of lots of especially leftists. So how are we gonna address that? Panel, mm. I want to ask you how are we gonna address that? Have any of you have any idea? I mean, I have some ideas, but and obviously people can feel free to disagree to disagree but i think that uh like i think it's worth talking about how racist white leftists are because it's a problem and i think like in the u.s like people of color are constantly like like you know like when people talk about uh oh my gosh dual consciousness like that black people have it's like you're always like seeing yourself through the eyes of how white people see you so there's a way where you can't escape talking about white people because we are suffering under white supremacy and the people who are perpetuating it the most are white people. So we kind of have to talk about like racism. And this includes white leftists, unfortunately, because you would hope that they could just be our allies and stand in solidarity instead of pulling some of the bullshit that they try to pull every single week on Twitter. But here we are. And I think that, yes, let's talk about it. This is gonna come up. But I do believe that we, I think the the best thing we can do is actually try to gather around other BIPOC people and not just like BIPOC people, BIPOC people, people who truly want, that we want to have solidarity with, uh, with queer communities, trans communities, disabled communities, and people, uh, you know, who are very, who are very serious about not being racist and also transphobic and all, and all these other things who are against these systems of oppression and just try to cultivate these communities and, and really put our attention there because white people are not, I just don't expect them to change. And some people have said that this is very doomer and I don't think it's doomer. I just think it's like a pattern. Like we've seen, we've seen this. People have been talking about the issues of even white leftists white liberals, you know, the issue of, of them being racist. And they just, at this point, it's clear they don't want to listen and we can't make them. So I kind of think moving on is just trying to cultivate the communities that we want to see. And then for white leftists who do want to, you know, be a part of that and they actually do, like, let's go. But I don't want to, I, I think it's not a great use of our time trying to convince them of anything because they just don't care. And that's just my opinion. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, I think 
I mean, there, there, I think there are many different things that could be done to address this big issue, but you know, I think the point is very valid and this is something that's, that we're going to struggle with. I mean, the white left as a, I don't even know if we can call it a white left because, uh, there, there really is no organization, you know, white political organization that can really happen that's left, right? But you have white people who consider themselves leftists who then go into political spaces and, and do what they do. And a lot of the times, you know, it can be very disruptive. And I've been in many situations where, where that's the case. But at the same time, I think that uh, one of the big problems we have right now is in the United States, at least, is that the most revolutionary movements that have existed in the United States, uh, that's the Black Freedom Movement, Black Liberation Movement, the Indigenous uh, Peoples Movements, uh, they are, you know, in, in a big, uh, serious, in, in serious retreat. Uh, it, it's been a, a real coordinated destruction, campaign of destruction on the part of the U.S. government to ensure that really the most revolutionary uh, sections of this society are unable to provide that leadership that we need so badly right now. And so that's where you have white leftists and honestly, their complicity in promoting, right. Being so, uh, on the one hand, racist, as, as you said, uh, professor Flash, like literally like racist in political spaces and in their politics. And then also you have the ruling class, right. The white ruling class, They've cultivated, as you were talking, Luna, you were talking about these figures, right? They've cultivated a leadership among, you know, a black and gender, probably call it the black misleadership class uh, around the world. It's called like neo-colonialism. But there is this leadership, this class that stands in between the right ruling class and the masses of people. And they, you know, do the bidding of the ruling class. And so we have that situation that's very difficult to approach because you will have white liberals, for example, come after people like myself or others who raise issues with, let's say, a Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, and they'll say, well, you're just racist, right, for, for bringing up these issues, <laughs> while completely rejecting the fact that it is the confluence of ruling class interests, which Kamala Harris and Barack Obama are a part of, which have created this situation and all of these instances of oppression, the worsening conditions for people of color, for black people, for indigenous people like that. They're at the center of it, but it's the ruling class which really dictates the interests of all the politicians, black, white or otherwise, who are, are really in the driver's seat. And so how we address this is, I mean, we have to tell the truth, first and foremost. We have to tell the truth about the situation. But I do agree that we need to also be able to focus where we really should be, should be. Like we all have our roles to play. Not all of us are going to be organizing, let's say, the Black Liberation Movement. Like that's like black people are going to be the ones to figure that out. But we do have to tell the truth. We do have to stand by principles and we do have to be able to on questions of empire, of questions of class, of questions of white supremacy, we have to be able to try to build a broad, you you know, uh, front of people who are willing to confront power uh, on on serious demands, right? And, and so I think that there is just multiple levels and layers from which this work has to has to happen, and, and we're all we're all going to play our part. I think in making that happen. Um, but unfortunately, in terms of the first question, you know, about colorblindness, reverse racism, and, you know, this idea that just talking about race is an attack. I mean, if we're starting at that level, then we have a lot of work to do. And we have a lot of really tiring. I mean, I'm tired. I mean, I'm really tired of, <laughs> of yeah, having that kind of conversation, right? Because we really are that that's really starting at square one. And that's where I really agree with you, Professor Flies, like, we do have to be building with people who are already there, you know, who are already ready to be in this fight because those folks who are like not willing to stand up on certain issues relating to white supremacy. Yeah. Like, like we will be literally throwing 
uh, you know, we'll be throwing tennis balls at, at, at brick walls at the, uh, essentially, right? Like, like it's just going to bounce right back. Um, so, so anyway, uh, that's my opinion on that. Do you want to go sir, first, Cola, or do you want me to go before you and then you finish on the last? Up to you. Oh, um, yeah, I guess I could, I could jump in with that real quick. Um, just, uh, just on the question of what, what we do. Uh, <laughs> Um, I know it's, it's, it is a very hard question to answer. I think, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, I, I think I agree with, 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 with Professor Flowers and of course with, with, with Danny. Um, glad, glad you, glad you were able to make it by the way. Uh, thanks for Thank coming. You. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, it is a hard, it is hard. It's, it's a very hard question. Like my day job is software development. Actually. I mean, it's like, I've, I actually make, I'm actually working on a, I'm, ac I'm making an anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist video game where you play a female Vietnamese soldier beating up American imperialists in the Vietnam war with Luna. Luna's the main character and our lead researcher. So look forward to that. Anyway, a little, <laughs> that's my, that's, that's my small solution is make entertaining video games that hopefully bring people over when they think that they're just being entertained, you know, chilling out from their, you know, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, crunch work that they're doing all day long. Anyway, but, I think that the question is very difficult. If somebody knew how to build successful socialism in mm. Western countries, um, we might have had, you know, uh, I think that like I was, you know, I, I, I tend to, you know, sometimes I'm being hyperbolic, but sometimes I'm just saying true things and people, I know, I know Danny, you are an actual journalist and this is very rare in the Western world, English speaking world. I call it the stormtrooper languages, English, French, Spanish. It's hard to find truth. And, yeah. um, and so building successful socialism is a difficult task in historically colonizer, historically wealthy, uh, and these tend to overlap, the historically white, these tend to overlap, not exclusively, you know, I also have Japanese heritage and we, I have, I have, I have stormtroopers from Japan and from uh, cowboy white uh, uh, settlers uh, in my, in my bloodline in Hawaii, we're very mixed. Like uh, I was just talking about Keanu Reeves earlier and, you know, he's got people from all over in his uh, heritage, but um when you come from a wealthy the wealthy sides of my family I actually have one of my relatives like did make up for ann curry and colin powell um and married into basically billionaire wealth and she took i'm native hawaiian and I, asian as i said and um and uh she's more asian and hawaiian than white she mm -hmm. erased all of whatever was hawaiian and asian about her literally cut her epicanthic folds bleached her skin white and was a peace corps worker in hawaii and uh, in Guam as well, which is under U.S. military occupation as well, um, like we are. And um, she actually wanted to help the world and was anti-military and was trying to help people. And then married a wealthy white, uh, actually one of the original people who wanted to drill in Alaska. Uh, he was a, a seven generation, the oldest wealth in the West Coast in Oregon. And she was probably experiencing horrific anti-Asian racism in the West Coast. We now know the U.S. is full of, of course. With the last year, it's very clear with 1,000% increases in anti-Asian racism. But I've already gone over that. But she probably suffered a lot of that. But what she did, her solution was to erase all of the whatever was Hawaiian, whatever was brown, literally in her skin color, changed her accent. She sounds different. She sounds like a, she sounds like a Republican senator now. Um, and she made millions of dollars. She became incredibly wealthy. She has like 25 golden toilets not literally golden but she has like massive properties and she abuses her hispanic disproportionately non-white maids to this day i've seen her do it to their face uh in front of guests um and so um in and even even for us in hawaii i'm like how do i organize I, half of my family works for the u.s empire the u.s military uh or or big capital we, we are it is a sad illegal u.s i was often bring up illegal u.s military occupation it is a fraudulent annexation. The United Nations has already said the United States has no legitimate government in Hawaii uh, under international law, and the United States military must immediately withdraw. The United States government has no jurisdiction. The sovereign country of Hawaii should be governing itself. Um, but uh, you know, uh, there are many young people in Hawaii who are fighting that, and there are some people that are even also, uh, you know, like my own father denies to my my father denies both Canadian genocide in residential schools and Hawaiian genocide to my face to this day. Gosh. I said, dad, they erased us, dad. And he says, no, I'm a white American man. I mean, dad, when people look at you, they see brown, they see your nose, your, your wide nose, they see your Asian eyelids. They don't see a white man. Wow. He's, he is yeah. in denial of that right now. He tells me, Chris, we're all white Americans and we're, we're, we're Christian American and, 
I don't like capitalism. You know, I'm a hippie guy. I'm just a hippie white man. I'm like, dad, you're not. You're not. My mother straight into my mother is a full. She's like half Hawaiian. She's got that curly hair. Um, she's straight into her hair to this day. The whiteness it is, is it is everywhere. It is sadly in my own yeah. people. And my so I, I so anyway, this is not really answering your question directly, but in a certain sense, that and that is one of the I can I can't even get my parents to understand. Hey, you know. One guy, Jeff and Elon, having multi hundred billions of dollars. Most people understand, even white people. That's not, that's probably not an optimum system. You know, capitalism, that's a problem. But the, what's harder to get past is part of that system is this thing that you are paying this fealty to, this mm -hmm. thing that is crushing you, that is poisoning your water, that 93,000 people cannot drink their water because the US military has been for decades. And now, in an extremely egregious event, dumps so much fuel that people are getting rashes on their butt uh, from sitting on a toilet. You know, Empire Files, Abby, I know you guys all, and probably know Mike Fries and Abby Martin, um, covering this. Many people are thankfully are starting to cover this. It should have been covered like three decades ago, but better late than never, you know. Uh, but I said, as we, all we know, all, as I said, there's barely any journalists. There's only Danny, and there's like Black Agenda Report, Danny, you know, Mike, Abby, and then like maybe Gray Zone, and then I don't know what else. There's not that much. Anyways, so so number one, if you don't do anything else, please, please, please help Danny with the, when, when Danny puts a plug in, please support Danny's uh, journalism number one but Thank anyway I'll, I'll stop sidetracking myself but finally i uh so uh, long story short i don't even know what the answer is in hawaii what i do know is that um we have to each of us like you know it, uh kj no who was on that panel i believe recently for uh, multiple very important uh asian diaspora korean that is very un understands the military industrial complex and empire very well has said we are soaked in a fire hose of disinformation. We are drenched by the CIA's, as you know, was it, uh, you know, uh, the CIA director said, uh, we'll know when the disinformation campaign is complete, when everything the American public believes is false. And America is the world, as we know, the United States deems every inch of the planet and space as its territory, uh, even if it's legitimate or not. Neo-colonial, colonial, or exemptionary U.S. military occupation like Okinawa or otherwise. And if every second of the day we are being drenched in such lies, it is it is incredibly difficult. Um, my my if I, even if I tell my dad and he'll get it one night. Oh my God, Chris, you just laid out the history of colonialism and capitalism. I guess America might not really be legitimate here in Hawaii, and maybe I'm not a white man. The next day he'll wake up and he'll be drenched with CNN, MSNBC, Fox, cooler water cooler work and home conversations, kitchen table conversations that are soaked with this racist, imperialist, mm. capitalist crap. And so I cannot really. I mean, I mean, you know, there, there, there's I call it there's a death star of disinformation that if, if the war is being fought in our minds, I think that was another KJ no quote, then we need a life star. And part of that is, you know, we have, you know, death, uh, you know, we have there's CGTN, there's there's Vietnamese, there's a Telesur, there's a there's a growing counter hegemonic group of friends of defense of the UN Charter. But each of us individually in the empire has yeah. to do our best to uh, defect as stormtroopers. And um, anyway, I'll stop talking in poetics because I know, Danny, you got to go soon. <sighs> That's all right. Um, lost Sue. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, I have yeah. something to say, but definitely want yeah, to go to others. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try and keep it as short as I possibly can, um, just so that way you can hear it before you have to run away on us, Danny. Um, <laughs> no. By the way, where's your Every Child Matters shirt, Danny? <laughs> How can I, you my shirt says a real leftist journalist with my shirt says trapped in America because that's how I feel. That's it says trapped in America. I don't know if anyone can see that. I, I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> like people always be like, because people like will like see that I, like I had this like shirt that said socialism or something, and then this person like walked up to me and was like, "You should move," and I was like, "Well, maybe you could pay for it because I'm." Trapped. Yeah, that's what I always say now too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't pay hey up, baby. Demo. Reparations. Anyway. <laughs> you know, I I think I try to keep in the spirit of truth and reconciliation um, in a lot of my streaming and what I do. Um, because, like, a lot of the questions I get is like, oh, well, you know, is land back an ethno state? If it was an ethno state, um, we'd already be fucking piling you all back on a ship um, to get the fuck back to your fucking original country you came from. Um, <laughs> we don't care if we have to remodel the Mayflower to ship you all back either. Um, if that was the case, right? That's not the case. Now, granted, we have some nuances in that uh, aspect. And there are people that 
are not going to be able to freely be able to be a part of a healthy part of society because they will not let go of the violence towards people of color. Um, those things that we will have to take a serious look at, right? As to whether we try and find some way to rehabilitate them. If not, then maybe we need to ship them back to Europe where they came from and let Europeans, um, you know, deal with them, um, deal with their own, right? Hmm. Um, and I always, I always say, we're not looking at like sending and shipping you all back home. We're looking at honoring and respecting the treaties that they were in when they were in their original form made and signed, which was sharing the land together, sharing the wealth together. We don't see those treaties being honored. What we see is 1% of the population collecting all the wealth and leaving everybody else in poverty. And we've seen this even more so through this past two years of the pandemic, where the rich increased a shit ton of their wealth, while the upper middle class, if you will, dropped closer to poverty. Why? Well, I mean, you know, you have governments that paid these companies to keep workers going and on the payroll, paid their payroll. And then the companies fired these workers so that they can just keep all the money. We have landlords who got paid rent. Your whole entire rent memoriam, the government paid them all that rent. Then, then as soon as the memoriam was done, ran into the courts with eviction notice claiming that you owed them back rent when you don't owe them a fucking penny. Pardon my language. Um, plus two, most of these lands you're talking about or that they're talking about with all of this shit, are treaty lands. They belong to indigenous people. They're not crown or government lands. They're not, none of that. They are treaty lands. This was made in the agreements. And every few year, a year or two, they would government would come by again with, well, you know, being that there was some confusion in the past, no, assholes, you said that these were the markings set up for the treaty lands for indigenous people were set in stone forever. They would not ever move. Oh, wait, you found some minerals that you think are good for you to make wealth and profit off of? Oh, we got to move those. Weird, I didn't know. <laughs> I can't die. Shush. Um, so these are things that we have to look at, right? And no one's sitting back saying with land back that, oh, wait, once we get land back, y'all are fucking out of here. No, it's we're like, hey, you know what? Let's work together on some things here, right? This is, you know, look, you're getting fucking free rent. Hey, are you able to, like, you know, fix computers or do this or that? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a whole bunch of different houses in, in the community here now that we need to have these things maintained well. That's a simple thing, right? Boom, there's all your housing covered you don't have to worry about some landlord or landlord coming in and saying well you owe me rent off of stolen land um so you're gonna have to pay or kick your kick out and be homeless uh working so that way everybody's got enough food to eat and eat good not just barely survive on scraps but actually eat so that they can have a meal and their stomach is full and they're going oh i gotta unbutt that unbutton that button on my pants you know, real looking after each other, making sure that our disabled people are well looked after. You don't see that in both the United States and Canada. Disabled people are slammed into poverty and treated like they're, they don't belong on the planet, period. That's never been an indigenous thought process. I don't know any indigenous culture on anywhere in Turtle Island or any of the other islands or it, where indigenous people were considered people who were disabled like shit. Even Neanderthals looked after their own people. Even when they were disabled, they have found a body, a body of a disabled person from Neanderthals 
that literally lived much longer than he would should have normally because the people took care of that person like it's called going back to being a human being not being a fucking greedy monster do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and i get some people are harder to break through like recently i've been tackling some things about how some of these people who claim they're leftist or dragging people of color on to belittle them make fun of them um and basically um treat them like a piece of shit for entertainment value on their streams and one of the best tools that i find is that i pull up the human zoos and i go oh hey look this is what they were doing back in the day when Europeans were pulling people of color and putting them in human zoos, poking at them, making fun of them, belittling them, doing everything that they could to make a joke out of it for their own entertainment. This is no different than back then. It really helps to point the historical things that have happened in our countries and in, in, in with our people of color so that they can clearly see yeah wait shit hopefully that they, they can clearly see that this is the same shit they've been pulling since way back when and just how wrong it is how disgusting it is to do that it's the same thing when i talk with um white trans and non-binary and, and lgbtq plus people i go look this is the same thing that you guys go through that you all are fucking mad about and, and flipping out about and going, why the fuck do I have to prove to you that I'm a human being? This is the same thing that us people of color are going through. We should be having solidarity with each other, hmm. not fighting, not trying to, you know, start a rift or divide. Shit, I even bring up like the Marx and Karl uh, Marx Ingalls and Kropotkin sitting back in a bar back in the 1800s, right? And it's a rich, fancy bar to boot, right? That only the rich class got to go into. All sitting there talking about the split between communism, anarchism, and socialism. And hammering out that whole entire split. Yes, Holly. Exactly, Holly. Um... And these are things that I try to point out, right? Like, hey, look, right? Even your own gods that you created and worship of Marx, Ingalls, and Kropotkin all sat around forming this split. While we indigenous people had this all rolled into one. One person, one community, all rolled into one. Hello? Like... What do you need? Like, oh, no, 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 no. Anarchists can't hang out with communists. There was an incident 50 years ago or 150 years ago that, you know, that caused that split. No, you silly fool. Marx, Charles, Marx, Ingalls, and Kropotkin sat in a bar and formulated that split because they figured that was the only way that they can reach most of the stubborn white Europeans who thought of themselves as gods and not human beings like hello right education i think is a very clear point in in helping people to understand like even when i talk about now when i'm talking about like how we're finding evidence the scientists and everybody are finding evidence in um the amazon that indigenous people were here on this side of the world long before the Bering Strait. You see them all go, oh, what, 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 what? No, 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 no. Well, why is it a no, no, no? Oh, wait, right. Because prior to this evidence coming out and being found by your greedy capitalist corporations that are literally stripping down forests in the Amazon and finding these places, and now with new technology, being able to safely find all of these sites and see them and know that they date at the very minimum to 130,000 years. And some of them, they're still looking for more 
because they've only scratched the surface on it, right? But because the white ideology came from the factor of doctrine of discovery and Keller Nullis, that there could never have been anywhere, right? Outside of what they claimed. And now all of them are all starting to go, well, no, wait a minute, we can't refute this evidence. What we were able to refute before can't be refuted now. It's just, no, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so I'm like sitting back going, okay, so I have to look at education, right? Truth and reconciliation, educating people on what really transpired, the real histories and what we see today. If, they, if they're not able to do that, I don't know what I can do to help them. Other than, yo, white people, start looking after your own and start taking responsibility for your own people. Because it's really not my responsibility to educate other white people when other white people should be educating them. Do you know what I mean? I try my best to educate my own people, and some of my own people have literally spat in my face and stabbed me in the back because they're unwilling to listen and step out of that white supremacy ideology bullshit that's been shoved down our throats since we were first born for over 500 plus years. And it's frustrating, but we have to keep trying. We, ha we cannot give up hope. We have to keep trying. There are plenty of different movements that are going on and have not stopped. Like Hawaii has a whack load of movements going on that have not stopped. Standing strong and tall. I'm proud of my relative, Hawaiian, Hawaiian, Hawaii relatives. I'm very proud. Hi, EJ. Get out of here, white man. That's a white man. Hey, <laughs> white man, come here. You want to say anything to the panel today? Hello, everyone. Um, just your, just your, uh, oh, I can't say that one word. You, you can't. <laughs> but it's me. I'm just, just using hey. some of my white privilege here just to say hi. All right. Take all that space. Back to you. <laughs> Have fun. Your full, your you. full head, your full head in the stream. Mm -hmm. All that the space. Whole thing. The whole <laughs> thing. I'm taking the <laughs> <clears throat> okay um, like yeah this is what i this is what i look at right we have indigenous movements all across turtle island that are working and standing strong we have all different kinds of movements from all people of color around the world working hard standing strong trying to fight for our very existence to be who we are not who some other culture and race decided who we were, but who we actually are. Like even we have, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Luna, but even over there in Vietnam, right? You have to, you have to abide by what the World Bank wanted you to abide by, which was accepting some capitalism yep. in order to get the funding that you yes. need, that your country needed. IMF to, to and World Bank, yes. Yeah. And in 19, can you believe it? In 1997, 22 years after the Vietnam War, the USA certainly forced Vietnam to pay back $145 million because he, we wanted the USA to end the sanction on Vietnam. So they forced us to pay $145 million and we did it. It took us 22 years to pay it back. So we just paid it back in 2019, the, the December 2019. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The, and that, you know, that's almost like Hawaii or, uh, um, Haiti, who literally had to pay back the French yeah. for ending slavery in their own fucking country. Yes. Like, seriously? You know, that's some fucked up shit. And we're stuck dealing with this shit, right? Even though capitalism is a dying fucking breed, it's dying away like the fucking dinosaurs. Its day has come. It's seeing its end. And now with climate change... To pay to that too. Yeah. And with climate change, all I'm saying is people better wake up and smell the fucking coffee because climate change is already starting to hit people in the ass. 
whether you like it or not, whether you agree with the fucking scientists or whether you agree with the corporate fucking, the corporate masters who are fucking paying scientists to lie so that they can receive grants to do their fucking studies. Doesn't matter. Climate change doesn't give a fuck on whether or not you agree with it or whether you believe in it. It doesn't need you to do that. And by the way, yes, Comrade Rooster has spoken loud. We hear Comrade Rooster. I'm sorry. That's how you know you're in indigenous Kanaka Maoli territory. You know, Comrade Rooster, we, we, have, <laughs> we, we, have, we have food security. And, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, yeah, Comrade Rooster keeps us, keeps us fed. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and we have, like, we have all these different things going on around the world. And it's all about, like, even Cuba. Cuba has been under sanctions for so fucking long, and people go, oh, look at how poor and shitty Cuba's doing. Well, if you were under sanctions for so fucking long, you'd be doing poor and shitty too in some areas. But yet they're leading in the world in a lot of other areas. Mm -hmm. Not over 95% of Cuba's population owns their own fucking home. But oh, oh, Cuba is, oh, Cuba's bad. Evil oh, communist. Oh. Evil talking communist, about the right? evil communist, authoritarian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like what kind of bullshit is that? Seriously. It's the 90% difference between, of Vietnam, by the way. Hmm. How much? 90%? Yeah. People own our nice. own homes. See? And, and it's like, okay, whether you like them or not, does it fucking matter? What matters is the factor that we look at actual things that are doing for the benefit of human beings, not for a 1% fucking rich, rich, greedy, grubby, fucking spoiled little brats who should have gotten fucking hardcore spanked when they were growing up. You know what I mean? Um, and I hate to say it that way, but that's a reality, right? Some of these people have had a silver spoon in their mouth for way too fucking long. Elon Musk is the emerald emerald diaper baby, you know. He's got these little emerald mines. <laughs> right. In apartheid, it's all that. <laughs> right. Yeah. But anyways, uh, 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 I, uh, I just want to ask, like, Danny, if you, gotta, if you do got to go, you want to kind of, I know you said you might have to go a little earlier if you want to. Yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely want to interject on this. Uh, don't have to go just yet. It's, it's sort of contingent on, I live in a New York City apartment, so like, you know, when, when, when people come home, it's kind of like chaos. Um, very small, but I wanted to, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of great points were brought up and in the beginning, like this whole question of land back was being talked about. And it's so infuriating because you have this group of primarily, if not entirely white, so-called communists literally flanking so hard to the right on this issue, you know, making an issue of this of land back of, of a movement that's you know centuries old and then also embracing american patriotism because somewhere somehow they've made the calculation that embracing american patriotism which is literally just code word for white supremacy is somehow going to help the class struggle in the united states it's huh. a completely and utterly uh, infantile approach and it's so indicative of what we were talking about earlier that professor flowers brought up is like the racism of the white left like being unable to even be aware of how you're not going to lead any there's literally been no class struggle that's been led on the basis of american patriotism but there's been plenty of wars there's been plenty of genocide there's been plenty of uh, mass murder uh, super exploitation state repression, all of it that's been justified in the name of American patriotism. But yet here we are having to have among so-called socialists and communists having to have a debate that has literally been settled over and over and over again throughout the course of history. Even within the communist movement, has mm -hmm. it been uh, es essentially settled in the sense that white supremacy has been the biggest barrier, as, you, uh, as was said earlier, literally like one of the biggest barriers to any kind of class unity right and when there has been class unity it's only been when uh, let's say certain sections of the communist party in this country 
was able to see the forest from the trees and say, okay, we really do need to develop solidarity with black people. We do need to fight lynching. We do need to be part of that because if we don't, then guess what? All of us are uh, essentially going to be much worse off because of it. But we don't have that kind of debate going on right now. What we have is a lot of talk about symbolism, a lot of talk about electoral politics, a lot of talk about uh, slogans that uh, these folks don't even understand, a lot of abstraction. And I think it really does come from, uh, as was just said, this decay of capitalism. Like literally these forces are trying to just throw anything they have and they don't have much because uh, they haven't studied these issues. They haven't, uh, they don't have any really any relationships I'm sh with uh, movements uh, that uh, are led by black people, by people of color, by indigenous people. They don't have those relationships. They're literally looking at their uh, suburban towns or their so-called small rural white communities and saying, well, that's America, uh, you know, and, and that's all at the end of the day, it's all political calculus because it's all looking at this trend. And this is the big, broad problem, I think, that uh, we're facing is that there is this trend happening where a lot of people are simply looking at the Trump phenomenon still, even though Joe Biden, like, he's president, he's barely there, but he's president. But they're looking at this Trump phenomenon and what's happened since and saying, well, there's obviously this large section of white people who have been somehow just deemed working class in, in its entirety, is 60, 65 million people. And we got to win them over if we're going to win elections on the progressive side of things. And I think there has been this unfortunate merger of right wing uh, politics, white supremacy with even so-called well-intentioned uh, they're liberals because they're still on the they're not communists they're not socialists but they're on the like bernie sanders spectrum social democratic uh, specter of politics and they're making a calculation that okay if we're going to ever win anything we're not going to win over the neoliberals so we got to win over the far right and none of that makes any sense in the actual material reality of struggle like the only way you we're not we should not be trying to build some kind of majoritarian movement in the morass and decay of empire we need a critical mass of people that are principled that are studied disciplined and hardened and experienced in the struggle to fight on the basis of real class unity which means being able to understand the self-determination of oppressed people and oppressed nations, being able to be of service to those movements as we try to build a broader one. That's the only way it's ever going to happen. It's the only time there's ever been any success in the United States on the part of any kind of class struggle. But we're not having that conversation. We're literally having to talk about American patriotism, Trump versus non-Trump, uh, neoliberals versus Tucker Carlson. Is Tucker Carlson good? All of this weird stuff. This is the media space, right? Like, like all of this strange kind of flailing in the wind, like don't know where you're going, have no roadmap, so you're just trying to shoot your shot anywhere. And, it, and it's not working. And it's literally making, unfortunately, a lot of white people even further, it's like pushing them further off of the lurch. And, you know, we at Black and Gender Report talk about how the Democratic Party is a huge part of that because it's like literally killed the left in so many ways. It's taken all of these movements and taken their leadership and, you know, siphoned them off into the coffers and then disorganize, you know, and then that disorganizes the grassroots. But at the same time, we can't just be complicit in what the outcome of that is. We can't just say, OK, well, the outcome of that is. Politics in the United States are so much more to the right. White supremacy is more uh, virulent and spreading like a cancer more than ever, just like COVID. And so we just got to give in and we, we, we just have to start where people are. No, if you're a revolutionary, you're, you're in the vanguard. If you're not in the vanguard, you don't want to be in that seat. You got to step back. You got to step back. And, and honestly, 
you should probably not be talking about things you don't understand. You know, that's how I feel about it. You don't want to be in the vanguard of the struggle. You don't want to try. You don't want to assert any kind of leadership in that way. Then maybe there's something else for you to do, but you shouldn't be trying to act like you're some kind of pundit. You're some kind of uh, voice in the struggle that has influence. Really, all that is is business at the end of the day, you know, if that's really where where you're at so that, that's how i feel about all this i really appreciate you all having this stream you know, listening to me danny, ramble on about this stuff danny but if, yeah. I, if i can quickly if i can quickly just before you run off um yeah professor flowers could probably correct me if i'm wrong on this one um but around the same time when the haiti haitian um refugees were at the southern border on the United States and being whipped like it was back in the 1700s with slave trade, um, which was literally fucking disgusting. All of a sudden, a young white woman goes missing and is murdered. We all know the story. It, it replaced all of it, right? Now, we feel deeply sorry and, and sad, and, and, and our deepest condolences go out to her family and relatives and loved ones for their loss. That's that's without a question, right? We're not animals. We're not. We're not. We're not. You know, monsters. We feel when people feel lost. It, it is what it is, right? But in that same token, there was I think over seven hundred um, black women and mm -hmm. over seven hundred indigenous women in that same state that went missing. That there was not a fucking peep on TV or in the news or anything about. Am I wrong, Professor Flowers? I think I'm correct, right? Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I know you're at, you're either correct or very close. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, there we go, right? Prime example. Right, but it's so this it's so is... it's so typical, and and uh, I don't I don't want to keep you too long too long, Danny. But I just no, do want to no, say to you really fast, in case it. Uh, oh, are you doing okay on time? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm, oh, I'm okay. I'm, Sorry. I'm, okay, but then we're all rushing to talk with you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I do think what was happening, uh, where they were just like turning away Haitian people at the border, like that was. I, I know that I, I saw that, but that was one of those things that I don't even know if other people, like I, I do wonder if, if, uh, white people saw that because I, I think there's like certain things that kind of blow up around. BIPOC people more so and then if you're white like some, maybe some people have seen it some people haven't but that was just very fresh it it was it, it's like we, we've seen that tune so many times where uh you know you have like something in the news around it surrounded by uh you know BIPOC people and then something happens to a white person and of course it's horrible what's happened but then these is issues don't get any attention mm. Yeah, we don't even want to get into that written house nonsense, like, like, like that oh. whole situation. Oh. Do we even want to open that can of worms where it's like, oh. oh, I'm you know, you know what? He's the you hero. He's the you victim. Know. Yep. You know what? You know what? I'm this gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. You talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into it like this. Okay, this is where exactly where I was stating earlier when it comes to like land back and stuff, right, and building a more healthier um securable world for all of us not just one group but all of us as human beings on this side of the continent and around the world right those type of people are the exact kind of people that i'm talking about that we might have to ship back over to england or the europe to deal with for them to deal with hmm. because they cannot be trusted to be in society in the world without committing some act of violence or crime. Hmm. No matter what we do, no matter how much we try and re-educate them, whatever, all the, the restorative justice that we could possibly do for them, there are just some that it just isn't going to work. And we're going to have to maybe look at shipping them back to Europe and Europe, sorry, but you're going to have to take care of your responsibility of what you shipped over to the rest of us. We know you didn't send us your best. You sent us the Puritans and the, and, and the lower end of your society that you wanted to get rid of because they interfered with your whole little fucking shit thing you were doing over there. We know that. So 
maybe do your part and take back your own people that just, you know, we can't fix <laughs> no matter what yeah. we do. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, just, just a judgment on like, on specifically like what we do. Um, and I mean, number one, uh, yeah, that what, what Rittenhouse did, um, it was, it was disturbing to me when there was a Marxist, again, I, I brought up, he was a, I'm not going to name the names, but somebody who was in Richard Wolff's circle as a premier, one of the premier Marxist economists, who does a lot of very important work. And I'm not saying to throw shade at any of these people. I know I keep bringing them up, but it's not really that. It's to really draw out the, 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 if the if what is calling itself the left in the United States and the West mm. is saying and doing things like when Richard House committed that act initially, shortly thereafter, shortly thereafter, like somebody who was a Marxist philosopher and specialist in like Marxist Leninist thinking, white white person from I'm not going to say where, uh, and taught in instructed at, at professors who were like like campaign hard and was fighting for you know uh, a lot of left causes. And when Rittenhouse committed those crimes, said, "You know what? I think actually Kyle was in the right," and um, you know, that was really dangerous. And like, and I was like, it's the same person who was like fighting me on settler colonialism is not a problem. And mm. well, the white working classes did a lot for America. And it's like, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm married to a white Canadian person who I self identifies as a member of the illegally occupied Hawaiian nation, but is a white person. Is you know, and and uh, you know, um, it's but but. You know, Holly is, is my partner. You know, um, we we but has that you have to have this ability to have that level of self reflection. And admittedly, yes, if you are the colon, if you are that of those people that have done sometimes I just call them the the, the unhealed descendants of the Achillean trauma. You know, the the Star Spangled Roman mm. Empire is America. If you go back a few thousand years, you find that actually Britain is the unhealed, the the Piccadilly Circus and all the roads that web Europe and Britain are the scars left by former indigenous peacefully coexisting people that were wiped out and their descendants have just never really um, figured out how to not live in mass violence and disinformation. And then they, they took black powder and writing systems and came back to China and, uh, you know, they did what they did. And so, but really ultimately, you know, I'm like, you have to, you have to deal with this. You have to not like allow it to fester. And for those people who Holly is somebody, I know Mexi is another, I was recently on Mexi is another YouTube content creator. I was, uh, I was just on a stream recently and did two two separate podcasts and YouTube videos. Um, who is a white person um, that understands that um, the project of Canada? You know, sometimes we joke it's three three oil three oil companies in a trench coat with a stupid hat carrying a gun. United States is three <laughs> oil companies, a military industrial complex carrying the biggest gun in the world. It's called the U.S. Empire, and it's called mm. broken. It's called broken Gerald Ford aircraft carriers. It's not actually that functional anymore. But anyway, all of that aside. People have to understand that that is what you're dealing with when you're dealing with the United States. When you put you, if you want to wrap yourself in that flag, but you don't really understand what that means. And this is somebody who was again calling themselves a Marxist, uh, a, a, a Marxist Leninist, somebody with a PhD actually. And it was kind of I was like, whoa, what 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 are they doing at universities now? Are these just private equity firms masquerading as places of learning? They give you. Adrian Zenz also has a degree from an accredited German college, so I, you can go look that guy up. But um, uh, little digs at Western imperialism aside, um, I think that in uh, just to bring it to Hawaii, in Hawaii, um, we had, as I often bring up, we had the most literate country on earth. I know, Danny, you tweeted uh, about Libya. Libya had one of the most successful mm. socialist countries in Africa, African Monetary Fund that was funding uh, concrete development where Western intervention had left $152 trillion pillaged out of Africa for the last seven years. If I'm not... If I'm getting tricontinental figures correct, I believe it's 70, $152 trillion out of the global south for the last 70 years, which is horrific. And um, and Libya was one country that was building universal health care. They had a lot of free college, free education, economic development in coordination with Russia, China, and other group of friends in defense of the UN Charter, by the way. And Libya was, was, was starting to help itself and other countries concretely do actual you know socialism. They still had internal problems and under siege from... France, United States, Europe, you're not, you know, you can't just hide behind the U.S. As Vijay Prashad said, Europe is America's poodle. So any Europeans in the house, you need to, you need, you need to <laughs> interrogate that. You know what I'm saying? Um, just because you're not, you, you sent your worst over, okay. But, you know, you, it's not like you had a really nice, you know, like little angels up there in Europe. Uh, Germany, why does, you have massive ownership of Namibia, France. Let's talk about Rwanda and Libya. Why does 90% of people of Niger have no electricity? 
while you have full electricity based on their uranium in France. And uh, that all has to be an interrogated. And so at the same time, so 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 what what we, in Hawaii, what we had was similar to what what uh, when I look at Luna and Vietnam, that's why I, I I see what Hawaii was at one point where we had the highest uni- the highest literacy rate in the world, the world's mm-hmm. first universal healthcare system in 1859, uh, 25 years before Europe had universal health insurance backed by mm-hmm. colonialism. By the way, we were not colonial. We were anti-imperial, which is what Sun Yat-sen used as a model for for the as the first beginning of a revolutionary process in China, which both the PRC and ROC uh, uh, admit and Mao. And today they continue to 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 build on. Hawaii was a model for socialism for in, in healthcare, in housing, in technological development. We had, again, 20,000 leagues under the sea was written and barely published when we already had inventions of submarines um, because we had a 90 percent plus literacy rate when only European America could barely read Europe had at best a fraction of, of the people able to read, let alone educated, because only royalty, and to this day, it's really only uh, royalty and aristocrats that really get the privilege of actual education, I would argue. Um, and in Hawaii, we had full education for all of the people, Kanaka Maoli, and also Hawaiian and Chinese. Uh, Keanu Reeves is the descendant of an Asian Hawaiian Hui, by the way. Uh, his grandmother was Chinese. Um, uh, Kumuhina, a, lo- a lot of our greatest leaders were examples of what it means to have coexistence of of people that are migrating but they're not settler colonial under racialized capitalism hawaiians did not ban the chinese language and then the chinese did not force hawaiians to farm their rice for starvation wages and 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 the chinese did not simmer racism amongst filipinos and hawaiians in their plantations and the hawaiians did not force the chinese to plant kalo and uh for 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 capitalist accumulation of the big kahuna's profits. They like to make these gross, uh, kind of like they like to talk about Bolivia, like a bunch of narco trap. They do this to every country that tries to build actual decolonial socialism. And anyway, so so we had Asian and Hawaiian Hui, which is worker cooperative um, and also political action uh, groups as well. And um, and these and so and 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 uh, but there was something else that happened. And then there were white Europeans. Some of them were descendants of Calvinist Puritan missionaries, uh, uh, including uh, Mr. Dole. You know, the United Fruit Company in South America, the same people were active in Hawaii. The pineapple is not indigenous to Hawaii. By the way, that was brought in by racist capitalists and enslavers who massacred our country and banned our language and culture. By the way, a Hawaiian pizza is not a Hawaiian pizza. I don't know if you know that. But anyways, I, I have infinite amounts. I have infinite tidbits about these things. But uh, main point is that we did not and we do not. Hawaiians did not see race and we do not. We, would, we did not ban white, white people from being in Hawaii. Holly is not going to get EJ is not kicked out of Vietnam. Very important. Like Luna, what I say, Vietnam is an example of what land back looks like when you have exactly. actual indigenous led socialism. They don't just kick out people that are white. EJ is living no. a better life than he lived in America, in fact. And Holly is not, we're not going to kick Holly, we're not kick anybody out. Now, if, if, you, if, if you are working for the NED and you happen to be white or not, and you show up in Vietnam and you try to undo their country, then you, you know, as long as you weren't committing treason against the sovereign country of Hawaii, Ah, uh, no, there were some treasonous Americans. It's called the coup backed by U.S. gunboat diplomacy in Hawaii. That that was not acceptable, right? But as long as you're not trying to undo our racial economic coexistence and living what we call aloha pono kuleana, right? Living huying together, right? Shakang shahui is the common moderate prosperity for all under under Xi Jinping, right? And it's, that, it's a, has a deeper, longer meaning. But that's very similar to what we wanted and what Sun Yat-sen brought from Hawaii to the, the Tsing Chan Hui and the Tang Meng Hui, which are both organized from the Big Island, by the way, uh, diaspora Chinese who went back to China to bring a technologically modern anti-imperialist socialist China. The beginning of that project was based on what was developed here. And so when we talk about land back, that's what we're looking at. Actually, most people who are now calling them whatever you identify as white, whatever you are, you will live a, a, a more economically prosperous life. You will live a healthier yes. life because you won't be surrounded by abusive, racist and when you traumatize someone else with your racism, when Kenosha shooter goes out and traumatizes all those people, you you traumatize those people and you traumatize yourself. This is actually how they got a lot of people. At, I know, look on Mauna Kea and at the DAPL fights in Hawaii, other indigenous fights. You tell the police, when you harm us, how will you go home and kiss your children tonight? Because you're going to commit a trust. Is this what you signed up for? To defend justice? Is that is that beating up and sicking dogs and spurting negative 55 degrees Celsius fire hoses all over us? Is that, is that what you signed up for? Because you traumatize yourself when you traumatize us. So in not working for the American racialized, capitalist, violent, pro- fundamentally, I would argue, 
possibly irrevocably, I, I mean, violent project, you will be healed from the, the I would argue, 2000 year unhealed trauma. But at, at minimum, your own continued necessity of living on the violence of capitalism, the violence of police brutality that enforces the capitalism, the violence of external world policing that the U.S. empire leads in. And um, that's what that's what <coughs> long, long story, I know. But that's what land back means. Uh, 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 acceptance of as as we would say in our asian relatives win-win cooperation mutual coexistence 56 ethnic regions i know there's 54 ethnic regions in china their plurinationality under bolivian indigenous-led socialism is not the same as what eastern socialist countries are doing but it's very similar you can have different languages you can have different culture that can grow and also can be technologically advanced and not you know just be our wax museum indian like you're indigenous as long as you are undeveloped and that's a problem. Um, you can be, you know, and uh, we can coexist and uh, be different. And we might need states as long as there's empires out there trying to destroy us one day. Right. Like Castro said, we might not need them. But right now you're trying to assassinate me 700 times. So I might need some counter. Yeah. I need I might need to defend myself. And so does Vietnam. They might need a few exactly. tanks as long as you got think tankies. Anyways, I'll stop talking. So. <sighs> I just um, wanted to really. Oh, no, I, I was just going to interject because I, I do. I should go, and I just found out that oh. my I, the stream I did before this was just taken down because of a copyright <gasps> claim made by Viacom. Um, oh, so wow. that's interesting. Because, because well, let's what? I can share my screen if you all really want to see. I just I just got the email. Um, oh god! Did it get a Did it get a copyright strike, or was it just taken down? I don't know. They're saying that I don't need to do anything right now, but a copyright claim was made so nobody else can see it. I'll, 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 I can show oh it really gosh. quick if you don't mind. I'll, let me let me see. You know what? And DJ can... had the exact same experience a few months ago when he commented on Trevor Noah's video. Yep, that's and exactly like what I did. Heavy. Yeah, DJ so got here... heavy copyright strike by Trevor Noah. And it took him like months. To deal with it and he won anyway but it took him months oh good i didn't know that he won i heard about that i was like that is some that yeah, i feel like that's so, like a youtuber's like worst nightmare to put in that anyway, much work i don't know if you can see it it doesn't look like it's sharing but anyway the point is is yeah the uh, viacom cbs claimed it just because i played a clip that was going viral on twitter yeah. uh of his yeah program so if it's any constellation, go. I got a copyright claim for covering as a parody, God bless the USA. <laughs> and they did I didn't get a strike, but like they, I just couldn't I couldn't um put ads on it or anything, which is frustrating, not because of the ads and people won't see it as much, but hopefully it won't turn into like a thing where you have to like permanently take it out. I just hope it's not too much. It's like, I don't know, getting that stuff I know is can be like very like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I just it's just like sense. Yeah. yeah, but it's just for me, it's just indicative of just how much control, you know, cause yeah. it, it, how much control these corporations have. And I think that's, that's part of the thing we're talking about right now is like how hard it is to fight white supremacy when you have mm -hmm. so much of the information sphere, so much of the institutions of this country are, are, are literally controlled by those who have a vested interest in white supremacy. And I think that's yeah. the biggest challenge. Um, but I do, I should go. I do need to take Aww. care of some things before bed because it, it's, it's getting laid out here in New York. Um, mm. But uh, but yeah, no, I really appreciate all of you comrades. This was a great conversation. Thanks for inviting me. Sorry, I was a little late. Um, okay. But yeah. For, for all of those of you out here, you can follow me so many places. Twitter at Spirit of H-O, Spirit of Ho. Uh, you can follow me at patreon.com slash Chaney Haifong. You can follow me weekly at Black Agenda Report, however you want to follow me. Substack, Substack, um, chroniclesofhaifong.substack.com. But uh, I, I really look forward to more conversations with all of you and, and much solidarity. Thanks, Luna, for, for hosting this on your uh, channel. And... Uh, Thanks to all the rest of you for, for a great conversation. Thanks. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Have bye a good sleep. <laughs> okay, Lasu, what are you uh, talking about? <laughs> okay, there's a few different things. Um, one, someone in I've seen in the, in, the, in the comment streams, I think it was on YouTube, was asking for us to not, I don't know, something attack LGBTQ+. Plus um in some statement i'm not too sure where they were getting that from or where it was from 
But I think it's because you were saying that like white people who are LGBT often can still be racist. Like I'm paraphrasing, but like still can have issues with racism. Mm-hmm. So we shouldn't, and we're going through similar kinds of oppression. So we shouldn't be fighting. And I, I wonder that. if I it's yeah. that, that, which is like, if yeah. it is, then that's really frustrating because that's not what I'm um, saying. Yeah. So I want to make it clear. Every single one of us sitting here that's looking, that's look, that you see on our stream, um, even though Professor Flowers is in and out on their, their, their camera, um but every single one of us our ancestors literally have um lgbtq plus um how do i put it spirits i guess we could say yeah right yeah we have a whole like religion based Mm -hmm. on that Mm -hmm. and so none of us in here well every single one of us all four of us that are here right now all have a traditional understanding of our people's culture and our heritage um and knowing and understanding that we have those roots where lgbtq plus lgbtq plus um as we talk about it today we had them back in the day before it was even a thing in today's day and age um and it was just a normal part of our societies. None of us shamed anyone. None of us belittled anyone. You were seen and talked about as human beings, just like anyone else. There was no, um, there was none of the stuff you see about today about having to try and um, beg for the right to exist as who you are. That was not heard of. And many of us keep moving towards that. Um, This is where uh, we get um, a lot of the terminology that came up of like two-spirited, coined phrase for non-Indigenous people. Um, Hawaii call is is Mahu. Uh, Got that? Did I get that right, Silver? It's Mahu for in Hawaii. Yeah, in uh, Hawaii, Mahu is, uh, it's similar to uh, Two-Spirit. Yeah. 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 And like um, our African and and relatives in that area uh, had, what was it? I think Batu was the African god of Two-Spirited people. I do believe. I'm actually actually not sure, but I know there are so many... uh, African religions and groups of people uh, that ha- that were accepting of you know what other cu- cultures are called to sp- what your cultures are called to spirit and you know I know there's like a lot of different terms for similar kinds of sorry my dog is like just being very needy right now oh, it's so um, cute. but there's a lot of different cute. terms for uh, you know just different gender identities and a, a lot of African societies uh, were accepting of that as well and unfortunately with the spread of colonialism, um, then you get the spread of homophobia, transphobia, and yeah. so on. And people don't actually really realize it. And it's it's very heartbreaking. And yeah. this is where um, I'm constantly always saying all the time that um, the LGBT community should be standing in solidarity with us people of color because we are not the enemies in this area literally we are not we 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 are right there along with you we're we're like shoulder to shoulder with you we don't see you as as like the colonizer mindset does or christianity does we see you as fellow human beings that you have a right to exist as who you are and not have to try and define or um prove your right to exist and be who you are so i just wanted to clarify that and make sure that we're clear on that um so that it's not uh misconstrued of someone going around going oh my god i was watching a luna oi stream and like oh my god they were like being so anti-lgbtq plus like oh my god no that's fucking not even fucking close exactly not even fucking close and and lost oh sorry No, 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 please go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add on to that because you started off saying that, like everyone here 
uh, knows like their history and it is very LGBTQ plus inclusive. And I do want to say that a lot of black people uh, that for us, like that was erased as especially, mm -hmm. you know, you know, descendants of slaves. Uh, we, we know that's very likely that whatever culture or cultures that we originally came from uh, were, uh, did, were accepting, you know, did have uh, places for LGBTQ plus people like naturally built into society. That's not what it would have been called, but we know that that is likely uh, a thing. And so like, it's, it's been like very heartbreaking because like we don't have, uh, we're like, we're literally incapable of going, going back to, to our history to be able to look at that and understand yeah. that and get in touch with our roots in so many cases. But, um, one thing that I do think uh, is, is cool, and this, this might be like a little bit t tangential, but a lot of times you'll hear black people starting to realize this, like, oh, like, you know, having ideas of homophobia and transphobia are very much something that we learned from white supremacy. And so yeah. um, it's been really cool to just, uh, you know, talk with other black people who are, who are being like, I'm trying to decolonize my mind. I'm trying to uh, you know, I want to stand with LGBTQ plus people, you know, black people who are queer or not queer. Um, and so that's been really cool to see, which. Yeah, like, I mean, we still have that. We still have some, a portion of our, our, our population as Indigenous people, um, even in Silver Spook, Kunumet, even in Hawaii, uh, due to residential schools and boarding schools where they literally were stripping us of our culture and our heritage. And like um twin rabbit is a great person um on youtube has youtube videos out that really help educate a lot of people on a lot of histories and stuff including where um the spaniards were feeding like a handful uh, like it was like a couple of dozen um two spirits to their war dogs because they needed to deface and and demonize and get rid of our our two-spirited people that were honored and, and, and cherished within our communities and, and, our, and our society. Um, and that went throughout all of it. Literally, it was Europeans coming across to our, our, our traditional people and seeing, and it seemed to have been, I don't know whether it was their disdain and lust at the same time that these Europeans were having for our two-spirited people um, I'm sure there probably could be an argument made in that area as to fully about what it was all about with their need to point out that it was like, oh, this is a, 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 a kept boy or this is a, a man, but they're dressed like a woman um, kind of stuff. Um, like for one instance, like his sock is a, is a very good reference to that, um, where George Catlin was like literally writing all these different things including there was one that was they called it the dance to the bordish or bordash which is a french term for chef boy um and showing their disdain and and wishes to have it completely eradicated from existence um many of our cultural practices had to go either underground or were lost in order to save our people and save what we can of our culture right um and we've been for at least a few decades have been trying to re-emerge our culture including with like going and and, and uh, doing fasting on mountains and stuff in our in our sacred areas of uh, praying and asking our ancestors and our relatives in the spirit world and creator um and grandmothers and grandfathers to help us bring back that wisdom of our ancestors so that we can pick that back up again in in our in our in our hopes of decolonizing our mindset that was that we were forced to endure through us in the genocidal policies of colonialism um so we're on that same boat right like i know there are still people within my community right even within my own sioux nation that have some issues still with that that they still have to let go of and work through um when i was i'll use this as an example myself as an example because i always find it's best to use yourself as an example when talking about this kind of stuff um 
When I was 25 years old, I used to run sweat lodges in British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia, and BC, um, up in, Can in so-called Canada. Um, I was the very first sweat lodge holder or keeper in that province and in Canada to allow LGBTQ plus people into my sweat lodge ceremony because I was told not only by some of my elders, but also by um, some wisdom that had, that was given to me as a gift, I guess you could say, um, that two spirit is were very much so part of our community and very most so very much so were loved and, and trusted and that they had the right to go either into men's ceremonies or women's ceremonies freely. They could choose whatever they wish to. Um, I gotten a lot of shit from some of the other sweat lodge keepers in the area because they were all going, oh, no, 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 that's, that's not a, and I'm like going, so are we talking about our traditional way of life or are we talking about Christianity? Because if we're talking about Christianity, then you're right. But if we're talking about our traditional way of life, no, you're fucking wrong. Everyone is welcome in a sweat lodge. We do not have a code saying, no, sorry. Only this and this is permitted. No, that's not it. That's not how we're taught. That's not how we're raised. That is not our traditional way of life and value system. And I'll tell you, I went through a lot of shit and fucking got a lot of hate thrown at me because I stood up for our traditional way of life. And I still get that for standing up for our traditional way of life. And, and this is what I mean when we're talking about like even us indigenous people we have it as like our pro-government indians and our traditional indians and there's a huge difference between the two of them the pro-government way indians we call them are ones that believe in christianity and white supremacy because they've been brainwashed and forced into that thinking through residential schools and boarding schools and and christianity and all that shit dropped and shoved down their throats since they were very little and are not have not come to the point of healing and decolonizing their mindset and getting back to who they actually are and seeing themselves in the mirror as who they actually are right and then there are trad us traditional who continuously keep working towards bringing our traditional way of life back into the world back into communities back into everything and that's the important part is that we keep working towards educating people we keep working towards letting people know hey you know you might find some over here that are against you but that's not all of us there's a very big core of us who are traditional and who understand this way of life we don't even care if your if your skin color is white yellow, brown, whatever. We don't give a shit. It's what's in your heart that matters the most. You're a human being just like the rest of us, right? Doesn't matter whatever else. You're a human being, first and foremost. And that's the most important. And that's what we look at. And that's what we keep trying to bring forth is that understanding of traditional value set, right? That belongs here, not colonialism but the traditional way of, of, of indigenous people on Turtle Island that belongs here. And even if we have to sit there and stand hand in hand with our African and black relatives who may be fighting with that struggle of decolonizing themselves, we will stand with you. Do you know what I mean? We will stand with, with our, with, I don't know, our Korean, our, 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 you know, our Chinese, our, you know, anyone, we don't even care, Scottish, Irish, Polish, whatever. Do you know what I mean? We will stand with all of you to help uplift you and bring you back to who you really are as human beings out of fucking this colonial capitalism fucking bullshit that's doing nothing but killing you slowly or fastly, either way. It's doing its job, which is killing us, everyone. So that to me is very much so um, an important message that I'm constantly shouting out 
at the top of my lungs on the rooftops, like, yo, motherfuckers, wake the fuck up, right? <sighs> Don't make me pull out the coffee and splash you with it, okay? Um, <laughs> oh, man. You know, I mean, I, we, we are tired, we're all tired of being babysit, you know? Like, we yeah. are pressed so much already, and now we have to, like, slowly babysit you from, like, Communism 101, Land Back 101, Racism 101. Like, holy shit. It's like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I think, I think it's like, at this point, like, lost like, I think what you're saying is so beautiful. It's like, I think I, like, I really want to be here for the people who... It's like, but I, I can do what you're doing for the people who like want that and are interested in it. And then I think people who are resistant, I think it really does have to be like white people talking to other white people because yeah. people of color are so tired. Like we're so, <laughs> I, feel like we, I feel like we experience so much pain and like, we can't, like, I feel like, I don't know. It's like almost like you have to like maybe reserve like the stamina to just be able to talk to your own people, let alone like talking with, talking with white people who are like what's reverse racism or yeah yeah i just don't, i don't have the stamina for it anymore it just you re you remember the discourse i have to bear head to bear about land bike and how i own a piece of rice farm like, can you explain oh what God. happened because literally from what i saw you're like yeah like this is really cool because our government gave us a piece of rice farm which is is really great and then people were like Fuck you, Luna. How dare like, you? I'm like, what? Petty, I, you I just say like a fact of the matter. And like, what, wait, I don't get what happened. Okay. Like, okay. I am I, a landlord. I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to throw out this hot take. Okay. This is, this is firebomb happening 101. All right. People see that Luna's government gave her a chunk of land for her, her own usage. And they're jealous because the American government saying, fuck you, you don't get shit all by homelessness. <laughs> is that, I feel, is there something deeper happening? Because Luna, you were like, we, you know, we've gotten these rice patties and we're like, oh, like that's, I see that. I'm like, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, right. And then you got dog power for weeks. And then you were like, yeah, like 90% of Vietnamese people own their home. And people were like, no, nah, Luna, how dare, like, I'm like, what is happening? Like, and then, cause you're just saying like a fact of the matter. Like this isn't like yeah. philosophy. This isn't like an opinion. You're just like, yeah, yeah this it's is not even a hot thing tech. that's happened. And people are, people are, are just attacking you. And I'm, and it's, it's just very confusing for me to see. Cause it's all stuff where I'm like, that's really great. Vietnam has a really yeah. great government. I'm glad that they're doing that. I'm glad that people have yeah. that. It doesn't mean that I, Vietnam, I, Vietnam is perfect. It's not perfect, but at least we have a free farm land. And 90% of right. us are on our own homes. Like, yeah it's the same thing when i like talk about like cuba or like what china's doing right now with its uh agreement with the world agreement with ending poverty and homelessness right yeah it's like when i point out these factors everybody goes oh well this and that about this and that and it's like you can't say anything positive because their view is so distorted that yeah. their that their view yeah. of how messed up the world is challenged and instead of just going oh i was wrong they have to lash out yeah. yeah. And, and and I shake my head because it's like, okay, look, can we take a look at this for a moment and see, oh, look, here's some good things that we could be doing and take a cue from that and go, hey, this is stuff that we could be doing. Do you see? It is possible. I know capitalism and corporations don't want you to believe that it's possible. But look, it's possible. These other countries are showing it. Hello, it's possible to be done. Does yes. Lasso have a channel? Yes. Yes, I do. On Twitch. On Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is that, like, the, the 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 society that I am living in right now is exactly a society that might happen if indigenous people successfully had the land back. Hmm. Because like, we took the land back from the feudal landlords of Vietnam, including my grandpa, and from the fascist Japanese, and also from the French colonialists. And uh, after we taking it back, of course, we have to redistribute it to our people, and everybody will have a, a, an equal chunk of land, as simple as that. And 
I don't know why, like, if the leftists in the West and they're fighting for, I don't know, like decolonization and fighting against capitalism, what kind of future they want if, like, me owning a land after we have successful revolution is something like petty bourgeoisie and landlord and class trader? Like, well, that's I the really thing. can't. They're not even thinking about decolonialism or decolonization. Yeah. That's not on the table at all. Oh, and I didn't yeah. realize to what degree that was uh, until like just, you know, seeing things with you and, um, you know, my own experiences that I've had, I've come to realize like, wow, like, cause like to me, you know, especially I think for a lot of BIPOC people, decolonialism is like, kind of not why we're here but it's a huge part of like why we're, we have an interest in leftism and yeah. uh and I, I like i don't know i i meet like black people all the time you know I don't, i'm not saying that i'm speaking for like all the black people but i have noticed like i'll meet a lot of black people and it could just be like where i live but people that i meet tend to be like folks on decolonialism they they tend to like and even if people aren't uh like you know, for me, like I'm someone who's very explicitly political. Like I tend to meet a lot of black people who just like kind of naturally are political just on account of like being black in America. And so like they're having these conversations and funny enough, even though these people aren't necessarily like political, they are still talking about like how colonialism is a problem. And I think that says a lot because here on the online left, you have a lot of white people who are like, I'm explicitly political and they're not even talking about colonialism. And it, it's, it's an issue. It's like a massive issue. And, you know, I also am like, well, I don't, ha like, I feel like I'm like, I lose some dignity when I try to ask them to to care about it and understand. Um, but I did, I did, I have noticed that I think a lot of BIPOC people are, even BIPOC people who aren't necessarily super political, like colonialism is coming up. And a lot of, for the online left, it's really not. Or does come yeah, up I mean, and then it or something? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think I, I think I, so people were talking about. We were, we were in the stream yesterday. Um, uh, uh, well, happy birthday again, by the way, uh, Lua's birthday party. Um, happy day after your birthday. <laughs> but well, um, it so people, wasn't my actual birthday. It was just to celebrate. Oh, okay, okay, happy mm -hmm. celebration. But you know, and some people mm -hmm. were saying, "Wow, you know, the most important things that I do." Like Mexi was one of them. I was like, I, Mexi, I've done like two separate videos and podcasts and. The most important things that are a lot of them have to do with decolonization, which is like you can't really have socialism in a place like the United States or Canada or settler colonies without decolonization. I'm, I'm you know, but exactly. it's like mm -hmm. it, it and it's like um, and these are some of the, you know, and these are people that are low melanin count, right? Descendant from European settler colonizers that some of them can at least get that, that that is necessary. You know, <laughs> like I know at least at least Mexi and Holly and. <laughs> And you know, EJ, of course, I know is some of these people, right? And then goes out of his EJ goes out of his way to say the United States is not. Uh, I do not want to be having a flag to be organizing any kind of left around, as Danny already kind of discussed. And then, but those things still. I mean, online and I mean, the thing is, you know, and, and it is certainly online, but offline, off offline. I mean, sadly, offline, it's like most of the U.S. is not even calling itself left. It's just right or center, and the center in the United States is right. So. Um, I, I don't think that like, it just, it's not just an online problem. Like the real world is Tucker Carlson. That he's the mainstream right there. He is mainstream. He is CNN right now. CNN is gone and it's Tucker. That's where it is. It's, I want a throne of Chinese skulls, black and women and SJW has got to go, like go. Like we're like right before Hitler time. So the online left is like actually left of the United States. And even they are not prepared to accept as the professor was saying, a lot of these most important, um, uh, 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 you know, just business. It's really one on one. Ultimately, it's communism mm -hmm. one on one. You want to get to there, but but and I think a lot of times it's hiding behind the, the jargon and whatever the book that he, that you want, and in these intellectual theoretical, you know, uh, uh, machinations of uh, oh, wh wh which part of the Trotsky, you know, dolphin radioactive waste, you know, it, it, you know, wh which which part of this labor value theory is going to be. And we're, we're going past that thing that, again, we need to be discussing, which is why we're having this panel, right? That's why we're doing this, um, um, which is that we have to address the fact the United States is founded on racism. All of the settler colonies are founded on racism, on, on colonialism. stolen land. On stolen land and stolen people. And, and, and it, that is not over. It continues. That's what, 
you know, and so, you know, and, and, and Red Hill is not just about, you know, um, nobody, I, as I brought up, I noticed today, similar to what you guys are saying, like nobody watches, I got a hundred thousand people watching leftism and five nights of Freddy's socialism and anime. Oh, lots of people watching that. And then it's like actual land back, actual decolonization on the you indigenous people are 2% of the population to 4%, 25% of the actual climate change, uh, uh, carbon and em emissions, people yeah. actually doing the thing on top of you have to, you have to support their project if you want to actually have a, a, a successful revolution as successful, successful uh, socialism. And, um, and so, and so, and also when I was talking about Red Hill, people are there to freak out about the poisoned white troops. They don't really care about the fact that they and the troops can all leave and go home. We, that's, that's our Aina. That's our home. That's our land that I, my family is dying on right now. And, uh, people, they, they're sad that they won't get to come to Waikiki and have the little tropical Disney Westworld with our servants. That's what they're sad about. Most people, when I'm looking at the, the, the fact, the 6,000 tweets that, I mean, thankfully I've got at least platform that the Red Hill catastrophe and the fossil fuel spilling into our water in Hawaii is platform, but it's not really that they care about indigenous people. Not really. They care about their little vacation. They might not have, they care about the white troops that might be them if they sign up for the US military and make some money killing for empire. And they're worried about that cut of settler colonial capitalism that they might not get. And that that is a, that's a very hard conversation that I've already, I've, I've retread that several times, but, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, we, I know it's hard, it's hard for me to, I don't like, I don't even look at people's chat. That's what on my stream, I just like, um, I'm sorry, Luna's gonna run you over the tank now. You can call me a tank. I'm not looking at your stupid message. Okay, this is college. I'm not going through 101. This is this is silver spook leftism calculus. You can go back to preschool somewhere else. I'm not doing that here, right? Uh, you can go find some white person telling you that oh, it's bad that there's a Bill Gates. No shit. Okay, no shit. What you wanna you wanna you want to actually have success? We have to deal with this racism shit. We have to deal with. It's gonna cost you something. It's gonna cost. The, you know the reason why they don't like Luna is because they know that that's hard. They know what Vietnam has done is incredibly hard, and it cost them life. It cost them suffering. It cost them years and decades, and that's hard. They want to be able to just like vote. Ideally, I just vote socialism into power. If that doesn't just work, vote I'll, and everything will be fine. I'll show up to a protest, hold a sign two times, and then socialism, right? But Vietnam had to like fight <laughs> for decades, you know, and suffer. It's just, you know, oh. you know. I just, but, but you know, what, what, the, what the left wants is I want to make two YouTube anime videos, make $10,000 on my Patreon and then socialism, right? That's what they want. And but I they don't want $10,000, $10, $10, Cola. They don't want <laughs> 10, just $10,000 a month. They want to okay? be like, they want to be like Hassan and make fucking a couple of million. And buy a million, million dollar house million in LA dollars. Dollars. Yeah. and socialism. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah, People like Bars and Destiny, you know, like just be that, you know, like mm, so but, comfortable. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> the things that I, I I want to block in the uh, one thing real quick is that like talking about you know we care how we care about climate change. You, do you know that Vietnam alone accounts for ten percent of green energy development of the whole world? Yep. All right. This oh, there you go. One of the <laughs> highest in the world. Oh we my gosh. It's literally on record that most of the um, communist or anti-capitalist countries are the leading sources in climate change and, yeah. and, and, and actually doing something compared to all the corporate corporation communist countries like United States, Canada, Australia, um, who are at the bottom of the pile on it. And like uh, the governments are allowing these corporations to continue to like 2040, then telling them that they have a decade to slow down whatever the fuck they're doing. So we're already know that we're looking at at least a minimum of between a 0.3 to 0.6 climate change increase, degree in increase in our climate. That's disastrous. We already see what the little bit that we're having right now is doing when you look turn on the news you can see it with all the hurricanes tornadoes that are going through um the midwest right now that is completely out of season and they're like having massive tornadoes right now in the midwest they've been having massive tornadoes yeah the wildfires not to mention the fire tornadoes that they have in in like um 
I think it's like uh, Los Angeles area, California area. Um, like there's massive, massive change. And it's only going to keep getting worse. Your landlords aren't doing anything to change it. The corporations aren't doing anything to change it. The government aren't doing fuck all to change it because they're allowing these people to continue on milking as much wealth as they possibly can. And we're all sitting back going to have to suffer for it. And whether you have children or not, does it matter? Or whether you do or do not want children, does it matter? You may have nieces and nephews that are going to be the ones suffering for it. Or grandchildren like myself, I have five kids and four grandkids already. My grandkids are going to be the ones that suffer for it. You know, these are the ones that are going to be having to deal through the suffering. They claimed already that there's already people who have been born who will see the fall of human civilization through climate change. Like, we know this is coming. Many different era. like, I even worry for my relative silver because with the ocean level rising because of the, melt of, the melting of both ice caps in north and south, and the water coming up and rising, I worry for my relative silver and all the enough over there. I, re I worry because these little islands are also going to be suffering for it too. They're just going to be eaten up by the ocean as many parts of the big mainlands are going to be also sucked into that ocean area. Like it's, it's not a fucking joke. I know we all go, oh, well, you know, the scientists that were paid by, you know, the capitalist corporations, uh, you know, back in the 50s and 40s and 30s and 60s and 70s, um, told us that, you know, climate change was fake and not real. Yeah, they got paid to do that. So that way they can continue on with their funding for their programs that they're doing. Wait a um, minute. Can I ask? Can I ask? Did the USA uh -huh. even pass the Green New Deal? Yes, I think. No, wait. I think they're still working on it. Yeah, right. I don't know. I think did. they're still. Yeah, I don't think it's fully passed. I think it's still in the the process stage. And even I, the Green New Deal cannot do shit. Mm -hmm. Can I even talk? Uh, oh, can't stand because it. Because they always leave the opening for big capitalist corporations to get away with doing whatever they're doing, because their hands, the 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 government officials that we have put in to your so-called voting agenda um, are literally not doing anything. They're just nope. taking that money, putting it in their pocket and going, oh yeah, no, 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 don't worry everybody. We got it, 2050, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have it all under wraps by 2050. Meanwhile, they're not doing shit. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, these are things that we're looking at. Like, seriously? And everyone's going, oh, well, voting is so important. Or don't split the votes. Wait a minute. Mitom is coming. Mitom is coming. Who's he going to vote mm -hmm. for? <laughs> right? We're going to vote for you. Vote. Don't split the votes. Don't split the votes. We have to beat, you know, the Republicans. We got to beat the Republicans. We got to beat them. We can't split the votes. It's like, okay, if everyone turned around and voted for... Um, uh, 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 independent that actually was talking about like climate change and actually doing some shit to fix the world we live in. Um, there would be no other choice, but those people in government period. And the minority in government would be the Democrats and the, and, and the Republicans. But people don't think about that because we're always told by all these different people who we idolize and think of like, you know, great philosophical fucking shit and stuff. Well, who, no matter who. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we you know, sit back. Yeah. Like we sit back and we and we're like going, OK, so you're telling us that here's a guy like, let's say, for instance, for those of you who might not have heard. Um, Mark Charles is an indigenous is an indigenous person, um, but 
they were running as an independent for for the president of the United States, and I think it was like uh, 2020. And they didn't win because everybody was like, oh, no, we can't split the votes. We can't split the votes. They should, like, maybe take some lower government uh, position and work their way up. What do you mean work their way up? None of your presidents really actually have a whole lot of fucking, in the previous, have actually had a whole lot of fucking prior fucking influence or, or partake in the government. Trump had nothing to do with the government. Ronald Reagan was a fucking actor for Pete's sakes. And he did his acting job great. He read that fucking line that they put up on the teleprompter before him to the public with great success. You know what I mean? Like Obama, Obama, who we all thought was going to be, pardon me for saying it this way, was the great black hope and bring us fucking out of fucking racism and slavery and everything turned out to be a fucking sham. He didn't do any of that. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. come on now. When are we going to start to realize that, yo, this voting shit is full of shit? It's fucking bogus. Uh, I can't stand it. Lasso, actually, and we were in the panel too. Actually, just a few months ago, I found out that every two years, you're going to have an election. Like four years for a presidential election and Mm -hmm. uh, two years for the midterms. Like, how the hell can your country function if every two years there's going to be a big election? It, it it's awful it's it, an awful it can. system it can it, and its sole purpose is to distract the population exactly so that the government doesn't have to do a fucking thing yeah actually like luna i was going to bring up you guys recently had that I, re- I recommend everybody watch that uh socialist democracy panel about why why china vietnam cuba venezuela uh all, uh so socialist countries actually are more democratic uh, I would argue that Hawaii had socialism with Hawaiian characteristics. Um, and what, what, what's very important is that they talk about whole process democracy. That's what they're calling it now, the whole process democracy that's in China. And I know it's different in Vietnam, but but uh, but that, and that's on the back of a successful land back, actually. So, so mm-hmm. you know, well, successful decolonization and revolution and then hope and then continued what we what they call rejuvenation. Uh, uh, and so and uh, constant interaction with the people where the United States has if 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 these actual socialist countries like China, Vietnam, these places that had have uh, that are actually counter hegemonic and anti imperialist and all these things, and that give everybody an equal land and ninety percent own homes. North Korea, hundred percent own homes by the by the way, so it's even more so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, and so and so if those are whole process democracy or maybe like they're just striving to be as 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 democratic as they can, the United States is a five percent process shallow plutocracy where you just show up to vote, you know. Uh, for whichever person that's going to do white supremacy and capitalism and imperialism uh, while you think that you live in uh, some kind of, you know, and so, so, you know, and it's very important for people to for, to realize that not to say that you should not to say that you don't vote. I'm not, I've always said this. I never said don't vote for Bernie or don't vote for this and that. I just said like that's if you have a if you have a one percent process democracy or basically almost nothing is going to change when you vote, which it hasn't. How, how's your life gotten better over the last 10 times you voted? Mine hasn't. Um if you have a 1% process democracy, you should put less than 1% of your energy into that process. And the other 99% should be into building a successful decolonial land back, actual communist, actual socialist yeah. uh, movement so that you can have a whole process. Uh, you know, for Hawaii, we'd have an Aloha based in indigenous civilization. Uh, and it'll be different depending on who you are and where you are, you know. But um, anyway, so that's just, that's my take on like, Oh, well, who are we going to vote for? I think yeah, that is a exactly. really yeah. good take from the spook where it's like, if, if things change by like 1%, that's how much energy you should put into it. And then, um, you know, put, other than that, put your uh, energy into an actual decolonialist movement. Like that, that I think is what we really, you know, as people with platforms, I think that's something that would be really good to push, especially around election time. Because I've noticed that like when elections happen, like, debate bros will like not to make it all about them but like they'll kind of be like you need to vote for this person like they'll tell you who to vote for you do harm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like reduce really harm. Small. And then they like just get really mad at BIPOC people if they don't vote for the person that they as like some white dude think that you should vote for. And, you know, but I do think when I was when during the last election with Biden and Trump, like I was one of the people who, uh, you know, came to the point where it's like, well, like I, I like I wanted to vote for Gloria LaRiva. And I was like, well, she's not going to win. And there's no hope at all. And then, um, so then I was like, well, maybe I should vote for Biden. And, and there was all this online discourse about it. And I remember like, I remember there was like, all, like I had uh, a friend talking about like, this is why I don't vote because nothing changes. And this is, oh, sorry. I'm saying this friend, but Luna, it's BP. So, you know, people was, was saying like, yeah, nothing changes. And then people on Facebook were like, Oh, well, you're so much as your like, oh, BP grew up in like Section Eight housing, and like, you know, has been to prison, and now is a prison abolitionist, and does all this activism work. But I'm just like, people. I just saw, and I saw other Black people talking about like, this is why I'm not going to vote, and they actually had like really important stuff to say, and people basically were just silencing them. It was always every time when I saw it, it was white people, and so. Yeah, I do think the conversation of like, listen, like, where should we put our energy, especially when it's time to vote? And like, not saying don't vote, but putting your energy into, again, like really making a decolonial uh, movement, I think that would actually be time much better spent and not just time much better spent. Like, I think that's that's the thing. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's important if I bring up at the moment that everyone who's questioning or wondering about this conversation that we're having on this specific topic at the moment should really seriously take time to listen to a video from Martin or from Malcolm X called the ballot or the bullet. And it might fucking open your mind a little bit because yeah. that inspirational human being sat there and made that comment in the uh, and made that video and that whole speech in the fucking 70s and it still applies very much so today because we're still stuck in the same shit nothing has changed yeah and and i say this all the time to a lot of the young um people who are getting into activism or leftism this is a 500 plus year old fucking voice you're just waking up to it now. Don't be tossing us boom, so-called boomers out the fucking door. Because we're the OGs of this whole fucking movement. Well, also, you're a very what cool is- boomer. Cool, well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of OK Boomer, I do explicitly think of, like, white, bougie, you know. Mm-hmm. There's, like, some there's some class in there. There's some race yeah. uh, elements and just talk about racism white supremacy <laughs> i think yeah uh wait a minute i think that maybe i am my i think my vote is most successful in this panel because like last may i when i voted for an our national assembly i voted for three communist candidates and all three of them won so my- yeah you can vote communism <laughs> yay, yay. yay. <laughs> people don't have to do anything no it's <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Luna, do you mean you actually yes. get the vote for communists and it's not the communist care? It's <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, so like, what, let me think. No, like, uh, I vote for like, you know, like I have, I had five candidates to vote for and one of them was like a super liberal one and I didn't like her at all. And so I had to choose like three out of four. So I told like three most communist candidates I can find and yeah, all three of them won. So that is like, and you know what? Lots of people have been saying like, because we vote communism because we brainwash, because uh, oh we, 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 we don't have a voices and like communism actually like brainwash everybody here. Like, like what the fuck are you talking about? We vote communism because lots of other communists, that's it, period. When people yeah. start saying that shit, I want you, Luna, to do this, and I give you full permission, okay, to uh-huh. do this. You have a traditional indigenous elder sitting here with you right now, giving you full permission to do this. 
pull up all the things that you can pull up and find about residential schools and boarding schools in the United States and Canada and go, you're talking about we don't have permission or that we're brainwashed into thinking communism is cool? Mm hmm Yeah. Or do you want to try what, that again? That is such a good comeback. Just being like, yeah, like, yeah who's brainwashed right now? Because mm -hmm. who's brainwashed, yeah. Yeah, so one more thing on brainwashing specifically. I, I love this little thing. Uh, I found that, uh, the you know what the origin of the word brainwashing is? Uh, it's now ubiquitous, but, you know, uh, it's actually based on, there's a Chinese term, uh, I don't know if that is, it has an equivalent in Vietnamese. Si, si nào. Si nào, si nào. Yeah. yeah. It means to uh, wash, it, it has a long history, but it means to wash the brain. But you, it, in, yeah. it, it means, um, from what I understand, it means it can mean rejuvenation changing of like old ways so like you know when somebody says hey you know what we shouldn't use the arsenal anymore because that's like kind of harmful to our you know you know this uh you know to, to to some of our community and you're like oh i'm sorry i won't say that word anymore you know or like we shouldn't say n-word that that's a bad thing to do or mm -hmm. you know this is a new thing that we should be doing we should let's try to do socialism instead of capitalism it's like undoing wrong things that you thought and you go oh thanks for the education now i won't do that anymore you know um mm -hmm. that's basically what it actually kind of meant that's, that's, that's a very loose mm -hmm. translation but it meant like new, you know, the new ideas, right? Infusing the society, and then and then washing your heart and washing your mind of uh, of less good thoughts and less good ways. That's what brainwashing meant. And when the American soldiers went to Korea, which was the beginning of the military industrial complex, by the way, in the Korean War and then the Vietnam War after that, and and and, and Chinese actually uh, supported in that time the uh, uh, there's a Battle of Lake Changjin is a movie that you can't get in the West. It's actually the most successful movie, movie this year. It's actually about Communists beating the shit out of American imperialists and capitalists in uh, Korea. But anyway, in the what Korean is that War, called? can you like the, drop that in the, the battle at or? Lake Changjin? I think Holly might have a link to it. You can't get it in the West. Uh, it is the most high, highest grossing movie. Uh, I had been at least for this year, eight hundred million plus dollars. But you can get it in, uh, not not in the West though, because it's a it's a movie like it's like Avengers if it actually said communism was good instead of America is good. Oh my know? gosh, I'm in. Oh, I'm so sold. <laughs> I always so anyways, like superhero movies to make me just complain about like capitalism is what we need to be fighting, not like some like random Thanos dude. That sounds awesome. yeah, not billionaire Sorry. Iron Man's and Captain uh, are America's. We, are, are we are we gonna are we gonna bring up the um the, the what do they call it? Uh, oh, what is her name again? The uh, Natalie Romanoff or Rushnoff or whatever, um, the Black oh. Widow. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure he will, but um. Anyways, let me, let me I just, I mean, so anyway, on the brainwashing thing, I'm, I'm getting off, but I just want just to finish it. Brainwashing, the term actually comes from, in that Korean War, um, Americans, and also in the Vietnam War, some Americans turned and fought for the communists because, mm -hmm. well, they figured out, hey, actually, we're the bad guys. Why are we massacring all these innocent people over here to force them to be what, right? They don't even want to, they, we're not, they don't like us. And so some Americans fought for the, for the North, for the, for the communist Koreans. With the Chinese and Koreans who all fought together in the Battle of Lake Changjin. Anyways, so so um, uh, an American uh, who produced a book about um, brainwashing. It was called. Let me get the exact book. Um, he he wrote a book for the CIA called Brainwashing in Red China by Edward Hunter, and he made a ton of money selling to the U.S. through 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 DC and and, and the big publishing industry that the Chinese had invented a super technology like some kind of psionic waves or you know like Cuban. Cuban uh, brain wave altering that's making all your CI get nauseous and all those weird brain guns. The, the Chinese <laughs> had this, the Chinese communists invented this super technology that brain that shoots it into American neurons and it causes their brains to be manipulated by the Chinese Xi Jinping dictatorship. Oh my God. Uh, uh, and it makes their brains into communist brains. And that, and that, that the secret weapon has, Americans have to be fearful of the brainwashing. And that's what, and that, so that word brainwashing, like, oh, you're so manipulated by something, right? It was actually a white guy made millions of dollars selling a bullshit book to red scare anti-communist Americans that the, 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 the communists in Asia had this magical brainwashing machine. But it's actually Americans that are being brainwashed by their own fucking anti-communist yeah. propaganda, red scare and capitalism. That, that, Rejection. That, Rejection. Rejection. That's, that's, that, that's like when we look at like, oh, um, the, um, what do they call them? Um, the pyramids in Egypt, they were all made by alien spaceships. <laughs> Aliens came in a spaceship and made the pyramids. Oh my gosh, the, the, what's it called? It's like, it's just called Aliens. 
It is ancient the, alien. It's like the most ancient racist alien. I've ever heard in my life. Like just literally, mm -hmm. like not white everything that, is, that white that? people didn't do. It's like it was a yeah. Now you might think that this civilization is intelligent enough to make this themselves, but guess what? It was alien. Yeah, it and it's like, are you kidding me? It's so me, offensive. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, and 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 it just you know it just fucking it just fucking it just fucking just ugh, just irks <laughs> me so much when I'm listening to fucking people going, oh yeah. Oh, you know, the Gaza was, or G Giza, Gaza, um, Giza, Giza, the pyramid, Giza, yeah, yeah, the pyramid, you know, was made by aliens, aliens came and did it, and it's like, because get the we fuck out of here, people, African people cannot, could not do that, how can yeah. they, yeah, White we're just not, not that, so us African could, could not, and you it's know where like, that bullshit came from, every episode. Insane. That came from that came from Darwinism eugenics. That's exactly where that all that bullshit came from. Darwinism eugenics. Because Darwinism oh. eugenics was the factor that yeah. all people of color do not have enough big enough skull to yeah. have a brain that is intelligent enough to come up with anything. So seeing that white people have a bigger brain, therefore must be much more intelligent and can only be the ones that come up with anything. Exactly. Wait, That's so all the different things that you have today that literally um, came from indigenous people all around the world, that also includes our black and African relatives, um, that you <laughs> invaded into our lands and countries, stole all that information and then proclaimed it was yours exactly oh lot lasso you know this is truth this is truth mm -hmm. uh, when vietnam was heavily colonized by the french uh so the french colonialists brought a few hundreds vietnamese farmers they kidnapped us hundreds mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of vietnamese farmers back to a province in french and then they just throw us there and force us to grow rice in that province so after like few decades hundreds of Vietnamese people like work our ass off to try to convert a piece of land in French next to the like the the, the the coastline so we can grow rice and then after we successfully had a technique of growing rice in France they just like throw it out and let it die there we they didn't care the same way and they took everything and even to this day that happens <sighs> in France still kind of one of the most famous provinces in France of growing rice and they just forced us stole us there to mm. develop everything for them and after they took everything they took all the technique and then they just get rid of us it's like how how fucked up it was it like is it like a teeny tiny small part of history of Vietnamese people that a little bit like black people when you was like literally stolen from their home country brought here became slave and then got everything stolen from you and then they treated you like shit. You know, I mean, whether it was anywhere in the world where, where colonizers stepped foot into, they pulled the same fucking bullshit. If they couldn't wipe you out, then they destroyed your whole entire history and culture as much as they possibly could. And they would always try and keep at least one little thing or maybe a few little things in their human museum or human 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 nature museum in like England and, and other European countries sitting there as the last remains of our ancestors and how intelligent our ancestors were. It, it's a common common thing no matter where you look on the planet. Every single time colonizers step foot into a new area, the same thing transpired. Mm -hmm. Just w w one thing on that, something that people might not know, if you hear anything about uh, Taiwan in particular, um, mm -hmm. as a native Hawaiian, uh, we, the Austronesian people, we're one of the people that uh, sailed across thousands of miles, thousands of years ago from Taiwan, uh, actually descended from Asians and we're closely related to the Chinese, 
there are multiple migrations to Taiwan, and we, the Austronesian peoples, uh, the Kanaka Mali, we actually have an, on, on, a little quick to the gender related topic. There's a, a single pronoun, ya, in Hawaiian, Indonesian, Fijian, and countless other Austronesian language family. It is not gendered. It is he, she, and it. We don't, we don't even have a pronoun that differentiates because, and we, we had none of that in, in our historic ancestral uh, culture. Anyways, and we made it all the way to Africa, Madagascar. We made it to Turtle Island, definitely, from Rapa Nui, Easter Island, which the Moai were not built by aliens either. Okay, so that's not the, the, the Stoneheads. <laughs> ben, right? ben Stiller's Dum Dum Gum Gum, those are not built by aliens, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, that was us. Um, and anyway, and so these, so the Pacific Islanders, anyway, so we're all, we were all across the, most of the Earth's surface, actually. If you look at, Pacific is one third of the Earth's surface already, and we made it all the way across the Indian Ocean. Anyway, so in Taiwan, there actually were the Hakka people that we were related to. Their the language sounds yeah. very similar to Samoan. And, um, uh, and also, there are also Han that had been there earlier. And similar to in Hawaii, they were more than not just peacefully trading with the other, another earlier separate uh, Chinese originated migration. But anyways, um, the Dutch arrived in Taiwan. The Dutch, uh, as they did across the Dutch East India Company, you might remember these people during the colonial period, they showed mm -hmm. up in Taiwan. They uh, enslaved both the Hakka and the Chinese. They were so brutal to the Chinese there in Taiwan that they had to massacre the people multiple times to keep them from the constant revolts because of how poorly they treated them. The Dutch called Taiwan the land of milk and honey, in which the Chinese were the worker bees. That was their phrase for it. So when you hear about the, 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 the Chinese are grabbing Taiwan, Xi Jinping and the Communist Party want to eat Taiwan, and we have to celebrate the liber liberate Taiwan, number one, Tsai Ing-wen is a right wing, you know, Western imperialist backed uh, uh, candidate, literally thank, called and thanked Donald Trump, uh, congratulations Donald Trump on a victory, by the way. Um, that's the independent party. But number two, it was it was Euro colonized, later Japan, Japan also uh, mm -hmm. did colonialism. Their banned language, banned culture, made force the indigenous people and the Han to take on a Japanese ancestor, beat people for speaking their language, massacre the Japanese, use chemical weapons um, uh, uh, in that time. And um, and uh, anyway, and so it's again, it's a similar story where you go on the earth and if you hear any bullshit about anyways try not to spread any nonsense about that particular place but um i know it's a very hot topic but just so you know europeans if anybody did colonialism there it was definitely europeans in taiwan uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh uh, we have about 10 minutes left oh yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah. panel yeah <laughs> Uh, uh because like now like uh i have to go ahead but he's like, like shoot very quick a part of his video so uh we have a 10 minutes so do you want to have any like last message to the audience in the chat let's start it lawsuit <laughs> all right well first things first um i want everyone to remember that when you're reading things um like okay say you're reading mark's uh, Kropotkin and Ingalls and stuff like that as a new leftist. I want you to remember that, yeah, right, right, Bailey? Make it another 24-hour marathon. Yeah. See, Luna? <laughs> no one wants to leave yet. Everyone's Aww. really enjoying this. Um, I want you to remember that these ideas came from someplace other than Marx, Ingalls, and Kropotkin. They were reading a third-hand copy of an eyewitnessing of how indigenous people on Turtle Island lived and then wrote it down and wrote a whole entire thing on it. One, because they hated the European fucking hierarchy and royal families, and especially the royal families and the rich people who would not pay their bar tabs. This is the number one reason why they wrote these books. Now, these ideologies and beliefs came from indigenous people. So please get to know the indigenous people that it actually came from before you start running around telling people of color that we need to read Marx and Ingalls and Kropotkin and all these things to understand something that we actually lived through and experienced in our everyday life. We don't need to read these books to understand it. We live it. We've grown up in it. 
We don't need that. These books were made for non-people of color who have no idea of this way of life that we live to help other people understand this way of life we live. So I want everyone to remember that. I also want to remember everyone to remember when you're listening, sitting there to somebody telling you that science is the only true form and has not ever been compromised, they're lying to you. Science has been compromised by white supremacy for an extremely long time. Okay? And it makes mistakes. And this is what we see as soon as new information comes out, scientists go, oh yeah, well, we previously believed it was something else, but now new evidence has come out and shown us that it's actually this. Instead, we got we got it wrong. So don't sit back and go, well, you know, science says the Bering Strait theory is 100% and science is 100% right. It can never be wrong. No, it can be wrong. And it keeps being proven that it can be wrong. So don't take it with a grain of salt, a grain of salt. And first and foremost, if you're sitting back and you're amongst a bunch of people who claim that they're leftists, ask them if they believe in land back. If they say land back is an ethno state, you are not in a leftist area. You are in a white supremacist area. Get the fuck out of it as fast as you can and find yourself a place that they actually believe in supporting and getting behind land back. That's a definite guaranteed number one way to make sure you are not in some fake fucking um, shithole where somebody's fucking, uh, what do they call it? Um, um, what the fuck is that? Grifting? <laughs> yeah, grifting. Thank you. Thank you, Gola. Grifting on the left just so that they can milk as much money as they can out of the left. Yeah. While not actually being a leftist, just reading from you a um, book without ever actually experiencing any of it in reality. So I want to make that clear for any people out there. And Lena Lana, we, like I said previously, if you may have missed it, we have pro government natives. And we have traditional natives. The pro-government natives are still underneath the brainwashing of residential schools and boarding schools, believing that whiteness is the only great hope and forgetting completely about who the fuck they really are. And then we have traditional natives who actually know that great whiteness is not the great white hope. It is not hope at all. Just so everyone knows, okay? And if you enjoy what I have shared with you all today, please feel free to follow me at lawsuit, twitch.tv.com, whatever the fuck it is. Um, and I'm always willing to learn. I'm always willing to learn as well as teach people the actual real histories of so-called Americas. I still get a kick out of that because they named America after America da Fucci, who was a fucking pickle jar salesman. Um, <laughs> I always get a fucking kick out of that. <laughs> yes, Morpheus panel offering the red pill. You can take the red pill or the blue pill. Up to you. One will bring you to reality and truth. The other one, you can go back to the fucking matrix and live in that little hot and live in that little capitalistic fucking hell hole. Up to you. It's always up to you. We hope that you choose to come and live in reality with the rest of us here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the, the, uh, the, all of your message a lot. So, uh, well, okay, Professor Flowers, what do you want to say to the chat? Yeah, um, there's like a bunch of uh, random stuff. I'll try to keep it short. Like. So I, I do want to like expand lawsuit lawsuit points because I'm not sure if everyone like maybe knows the context. Like when lawsuit is talking about how like uh, you know science can be wrong, there's been a long uh, issue with indigenous people being like, "Hey, we've been here for like thousands of years," and people are like, "Uh, uh, uh, you came here like only a few thousand years ago." 
on this like ice bridge. I forgot the proper name of it. Um, but people have been using that bridge to pretty much discredit indigenous people and be like, oh, like you weren't here for that long, which is also ridiculous because even if indigenous people were here that long, they've been here longer than uh, Europeans and, and so on. But this happens not just, you know, with this, this ice bridge, where it's been proven that indigenous people have been here for like, I think Lost was saying like 130,000 years. Um, but like, I even just saw something really little the other day where someone were, uh, I don't remember which group of indigenous people had said this, but uh, someone who's indigenous had posted that like, yeah, like people have been telling me, you know, and it's been known by our group of people that like coyotes and I think it was badgers like hunt at night together, which is so adorable. But, um, you know, apparently like a scientist had discovered this when people have been like saying this for thousands of years. Like, and this happens constantly with indigenous people or indigenous people will be like, yeah, like this is how things are. And then science will confirm what indigenous people are saying. And so just in case people didn't understand, like, I don't think, like Lawsuit wasn't saying like science is bad. I think Lawsuit was like saying like this, you know, science has been used to discredit indigenous people and then comes around and then confirms what indigenous people have been saying this whole time. Um, yeah, that's and a nice one. A lot of pseudoscience created by white people to just Right. Mm -hmm. So much of what we understand of science is very, you know, white oriented in a way that just ends up being racist because of just on account of just white supremacy. So I think that's just yeah. also something for, to keep in mind. I also wanted to say, I want to say this before Dan, Danny left, but when he was saying that like, you know, people who have these, these, uh, you know, big platforms, if they don't understand what they're talking about, they can just stop talking. Like I loved it when he said that, but I also wasn't sure if I should like jump in, but I just, you know, this is like a very late reply, but I really agreed. I think people should just not say anything if they don't understand it. Um, other than that, I don't have much else to say. Just uh, Professor Flowers, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I have exactly the same tech with you and Danny. I've been saying a lot in my channel, like, if you don't know anything about, uh, uh, if you don't know about something, just say that like, right. hey, you don't know enough about this. It's just just talk say off. that. You don't need to pretend. <laughs> just say, yeah, I yeah. don't know much about it and let it just be a learning experience. Like a lot of like, and it's like, that's, not like i know so many people who would do that it's not uh, i would i'd like to say that's not a hard thing to do but here we are right like <laughs> it is wild <laughs> yeah lots of people ask me like hey luna what do you think about this what do you think about that like i don't know enough about that so maybe give me some time i do this search and then get back to you later is that hard? right is it that hard <laughs> not at I all i don't need to, be, to pretend that i am expert on every single thing jesus that's part of the whiteness though and um, I also think patriarchy too, because I think a lot of it is like there's like these white dudes who are like who are so terrified of, of because I think there's like a fear of being laughed at, which I yeah. think that's why a lot of them are very afraid of me because I like am laughing at them a lot because it's funny, <laughs> but like I think there is like a patriarchal element to it where it's like you can't, like you know asking a question looks weak when really it's actually just a reality of being a person and you're not gonna yeah. know everything. And it's so much better if we can just like, be like, oh, I don't know about this. Can we just all talk about it? Can we learn about it together? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I mean, yeah, just to kind of like, I I've said so many things, like I feel like I've said everything I need to say, um, um, probably more, but you know, just on that, yeah, it, it, that's totally what it is. Like, you know, I, I often say I'm half stormtrooper because, you know, I have, I have, I have, I have Imperial Meiji stormtroopers on one side. I got Texas cowboy settler colonizer stormtroopers. I got freaking Colin Powell, you know, makeup artist slash Wall Street, you know, executives that are cut their cut the Hawaiian out of their heart and out of their face so they could be, you know. And so I've got that all around me, you know. And I I was I went to an Emperor Palpatine training facility. It's called a twenty thousand dollar year private school right next to Obama, the greatest war criminal that's ever existed because he backed the U.S. I have, I bring it up that he successfully extended the U.S.'s empire by probably be 10 years by making it look salvageable when it could have maybe have gone away faster in 0809 financial crisis. But anyways, so, so that tendency and the, the heart of that, you know, it is, it is patriarchal, it is white supremacist, Western supremacist, uh, pseudoscience exceptionalist. Uh, it is, it is, and I have to be right. And that's why I don't like, I don't, that's why I don't debate anybody. Cause it's, um, that, that is an antagonistic, um, my correctness is more important 
then all of us becoming educated so that I can appear strong. It's, 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 it's discursive might makes right. You know, it is bar, it is a rule by barbarism and the whiter and the manner and the more confidently you say what seem like big words. I so, say, you know, you, you, you got a white guy going into his fear based barbaristic. He starts using big words at you like, well, you're a woman and you're a person of color. So you can't possibly know all the sesquipedalian big genius brain things I learned while I was at Harvard studying, you know, with Bill Hayton about the size of women's hands in Vietnam. And that's why I can tell you that Vietnamese women definitely <laughs> live Thank under you, dictatorship. Oh, my God. I have a blue check mark, the by the hand, way. Did you see that? The, 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 the blistered <laughs> hand discourse. <laughs> Let me see your hands. Yeah, oh yeah. gosh! And don't forget my blue check mark. Don't forget the blue check mark. That's the most important part, right? <laughs> blue check mark. Here's my my degree from Harvard, Oxbridge, and Yale. And uh, now I'm an Asian expert on uh, uh, Asian studies. And I'm a. Anyways, so so but 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 you know what that is, right? When that 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 interaction you're having with Mr. Reply Man two six five three, on whatever it is, or in real life, or on a Twitch stream, or wherever, that is that is that is the verbal. Uh, that is the that is the imperial that is the might makes right, which is fear. It's like b bowing to the biggest and mightiestness in the room, most mighty barbarian in the room. That's the that's the West. That's the U.S. Empire. That's whiteness and that's madness. And then using that to stomp on other people, even though you might even know that you don't know what the hell you're talking about, right? But because you have a degree in what's supposed to be uh, political science, uh, whatever it is, or maybe you don't have a degree, you just you're just opening your mouth and saying crap like what Mr. V does all day long, right? Um, uh, just saying nonsense, <laughs> and then, but but saying with a white man face with big words, and that makes it right, right? And then other people follow you because they don't know except to bow down to the person that sounds the most right and the most verbose today, and that's very sad, you know. And I I I know what that is, you know why? Because that's what bow I was to the loudest. That's bow to the loudest. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna be real with you guys. You know, I think that Assange should just be like taking out the behind the shit. You know, you know, what? what I'm gonna say things very confidently having absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. That's what that's what he specializes in. But that is not just him. That's the entire Western world, I would argue, in fact. Um, that's what that's what every president specialized. Obama special Obama was just a greater Bosch. What he did was he said, America does not invade for the reasons of the of previous empires, like for resources and wealth. We do it for human rights and freedom. And everybody bought it, including a lot of people of color, sadly. And he extended the life of that empire. But what he did was the same thing that Bosch is doing, which is I'm very smart and intelligent. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm also black, so I can't be racist. America is fixed. And America is different now. And that's what he did. And everybody was scared because they didn't know what to do in 0809 when it was dying. When capitalism and American exceptionalism was dying. And the jacked up house of cards and Chinese bought up all their debt. But anyways, and he came out there and he said, it's okay, everybody. Sign up for a STEM class and join the Navy. Okay? And that's going to fix it all. Okay? Just go to, just shop. And he did his job. You know, I know this because that's what they trained me to do. And then I said, I don't want to go to Wall Street and be in a high frequency trading algorithm programmer and rip it, the world off for, for, for what? So I can have the nicest yacht in the Mad Max apocalypse. Um, and so I have to fight that tendency to just like scream down other people's throats. All, I mean, I, I do that anyway sometimes if I'm really pissed off. But to try to just sound more right in the room um, is a thing that I have to not do. And I know because Holly tells me when I'm doing it sometimes. Um, and... And to try to do now, you know, or try to become educated together, because there's all kind of stuff I don't know. There's all kind of stuff I don't know every time I listen to somebody else's stream. And the, the difference is like trying to not pretend like I knew what I was talking about the whole time, because that's scary, because I might seem like less like a man and less smart. And people might not, people might not donate to my Patreon and buy my fancy book for $72 on Amazon because I'm not that smart. Woo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so... You know, that I mean, that's scary, especially under capitalism, where you got to make money to survive. And that's what they want. They want you to be scared that you mm -hmm. will seem less right when you have a degree that says I'm supposed to be right. And people should give me money for seeming right. And um, anyway, that's so many words I just said. So that's what I want to say is that, like, we have to fight that tendency and and uh, and communism win. And uh, Hawaii is illegally occupied. And uh, and uh, and uh, anyways, get the U.S. Empire, get the fuck out of goddamn U Hawaii, like the exactly. U.N. said. And we call it Vietnam. We one day we'll have a panel where you know it's me and Luna and Danny. We're all gonna go like, and China and Vietnam would demand the United States leave Hawaii or X, Y, and Z. But we'll talk about that at a later date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Uh, he also can't be wise to Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
I hate, okay, I, mean, I, I, I don't want to leave, but it's like people are like, like the people will be like, I'm black, and I think that there isn't any racism. And in fact, I think we're talking down to black people. And then I'm like, yeah, that is white supremacy. Like we live in a white supremacist mm -hmm. nation. It's white supremacy is a mode of thinking, and it is a set of behaviors. Anyone can do it, and mm -hmm. people think that you're just making up conspiracy theories. But then it's also people who don't want to take the time to understand what white supremacy is. Otherwise, it wouldn't be that shocking to understand. And I just want to say, um, hopefully one day we can also include Canada and the United States in that conversation piece with, uh, you know, Silver Spook, Luna and Danny um, with, you know, Hawaii, China and Vietnam, Cuba and other countries around the world that are anti-capitalistic um, all going, yo, United States and Canada, you need to close down your fucking bullshit government and take your fucking shit and get the fuck out of traditional indigenous territories. Goodbye. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for being in this live, uh, in this live stream, this panel. This is awesome. And I really love talking to you guys because, you know, like, it feels so refreshing when mm. I finally can talk in a, with, like, with people who absolutely understand me, you know, it's, <laughs> it's really great, like a break from the white online leftists out there that I have to deal with every single day. So thank you so much, everybody. And I hope that we can have a panel like this in very near future. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yeah. everyone. Merry Christmas. Oh, that Merry reminds holiday. me before we close off, for those yeah. of you who might not know, um, starting on the 24th to after the 25th, I'm doing a 24 hour stream for Christmas on oh. Twitch. Um, for anyone who wants to come by, hang out, um, if you're alone at Christmas, if you're one of those of us who are loners at Christmas, um, or even if you're not and you just want to come hang out with fellow leftists and, you know, share some holiday spirit, share some holiday love. Um, yeah. I know holidays are some of the worst time of the years for everyone. Um, many suicide attempts and actual suicide actions yeah. happen at this time of year because people don't have anyone to reach out to and talk to. Um, so I just wanted to share that with everyone here. So um, we did it last year. It would, went really well. Um, and we're doing it again this year. So please feel free to pop by. Luna, you and EJ are more than welcome to join into the voice chat. Um, Professor Flower, if you, have, if you have Discord, you can also come in and join yeah, in the voice chat that. and hang if you wanted to. Silver, I know you and Holly and the kids are having your own Christmas holiday. Um, but if you know, if you want to, you're always welcome to. I understand, you know, that you have family that you have to celebrate it with and all that. All cool. No pressure. What pressure? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think we can definitely make it. You know, we have to have our international, you know, indigenous family have our little what's that? Oh, we're taking Christmas off. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> Christmas off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a break. But yeah. yeah we um, we're yeah. gonna try our best to join. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody, and yeah. see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.